Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 226, and if you're going to be listening on a podcast tomorrow, turn that radio up for that sweet sound, because Aaron, we've got an awesome show tonight, the Jersey Retirement Ceremony. Uh, I don't think we have clips of that because of... We do. Copyright. Oh, we well, do. We have a clip from... We have certain things that yeah. are happening there. Oh, there it's raining down. It's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it was it was an amazing ceremony. I only got to watch it after the fact, unfortunately. Aaron, you were there. When we get to that game, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, some exciting stuff. A whole lot of excitement around San Jose, not just with the young players, the ones to look forward to for the future, but you know, again, Joe Thornton and celebrating his career. Uh, it's going to be uh, a fun night, I think, to talk with you guys about that. So if you can, do us a favor, folks, if you're in here right now, please share us out to all your Sharks friends and family. Get us out there. Get them in the chat right now because uh, the, the conversation is a lot more fun. The show is a lot more fun. We've got a lot of people uh, chatting with us and chatting with you. So there you go. Um, Aaron, where do you want to start here? Well, we can go back to the beginning of the week. Uh, the first game, which was a great game mm. against the Detroit Red Wings, who I always love to beat going <laughs> way back, way back to the original days. But yeah. uh, this game was a game where the Sharks end up winning in overtime in spectacular fashion with Macklin Celebrini on the breakaway um, and putting it away on the breakaway, which is, uh, sorry, not breakaway. It wasn't quite a breakaway. Granlin set him up, and he just skidded and blew by everybody. So it wasn't yeah. like a clean break or anything. But um, he uh, did like a power move, basically, and, and took, uh, I think it was Talbot was in net, and took him by surprise and beat him glove side. So uh, it was an amazing finish. But um, we'll start there. So <laughs> <laughs> I just gave the ending away. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> going back, like, like, I put all these notes in during the game. So I'm like, okay, so I won't forget, right? And... Um, So I'm looking back at these notes. I'm like, it feels so long ago that I wrote these because it was last Tuesday or Monday. And speaking of long ago, before we continue with this game, I do happen to see some comments and I pointed to one. I think it's hilarious. Uh, Yes, I'm back from suspension. (laughs) I guess guess that was the joke. I wasn't here. See, I'm not here to defend myself. It's not fair. Uh, Yeah, apparently I was suspended for uh, saying bad things about Noah Gregor. And that's why Devereaux came and sat in for me. By the way, uh, thank you, Devereaux, for sitting in once again. I really appreciate you always stepping up the plate and being here. I know you enjoy it, but it actually does help us out. So, again, thank you uh, for for helping us out there. But, yeah, um, I just thought that was really funny because I popped into the live Uh, and I saw the the comments. Yeah, Yeah, I saw the comments. You relate to our own show. Yeah. I got things to do, buddy. Right. I'm... I'm, 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 (laughs) You know why I was gone, the real reason. You were on the East Coast. Yeah, I was in it was Rochester. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the boy had a, uh, a tournament out there. So, yeah, the, the time difference uh, on top of uh, just being busy with the, the kids night. and the team and everything. Else. Yeah, it was a very late night. But yeah. I was there, okay? So I don't want to hear any more from you guys, right? <laughs> just kidding. Okay, anyway, uh, yes, the Detroit game. Uh, a, a fantastic finish, we'll say. You should oh, read yeah, that Mark. one. Okay, uh, what's going, fellas? Tapping in from Copenhagen, Denmark. Hello, it's 6 a.m. here. Good to see Paul fresh off his suspension. Been trying to get that suspension joke going for a while now. CJ, thank you so much. Appreciate you uh, interacting in any way uh, possible. Hopefully, we'll. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we, we uh, brighten your morning just a little bit here uh, with, with some of the topics. But yes, uh, the. What, another one now? Is a five it's just, stream? It's just going to keep going. Oh, yeah, we're just keep doing this? Okay. It was a five stream suspension. Nope, nope. I got off on good behavior. Um, yeah, the Detroit game. Uh, the one of the things that's here of note is Mackenzie Blackwood. Mackenzie yes. Blackwood um, doing what he does best and doing what he's been doing all season long. Whether or not he gets the win, whether or not uh, the defense plays good in front of him, whether or not he gets credit for the way that he's been playing, the man stands on his head night in, night out, and I am extremely looking forward to the day where he gets traded because he deserves it. Not right. because, not because uh, you know, oh, the Sharks can get a good prep. No, forget what we get in return. The man deserves it. The man deserves to play for a team that is worthy of his talents, worthy of his efforts, and can help lead them to a Stanley Cup run properly, uh, unlike the whole Aiden Hill situation. See, I agree, which is why I'm pumping up his tires, because I want a bigger return <laughs> coming back for this guy, because he is a great goalie. He is a good goalie. But I'm also not worried about him being traded, because the Sharks are in good hands yes. with either Vanacek and or Askarov, which we'll get into a little bit later, because he played it in his first 
Sharks game. But um, I'm not so worried anymore about, I guess, losing a good goalie because we have almost a gluttony of yeah. pretty good goalies. Vanacek's not... He's good, He's he, but he hasn't performed as well as... as or as consistent, consistently well as uh, Blackwood has. But yes, I think... Um, and we keep talking about this, I think, every week, that Colorado's been heavily scouting him and, and wanting him because they desperately need goaltending. Um, I don't know if you saw the news the other day, but um, St. Louis Blues fired their coach. Mm-hmm. And hired Jim Montgomery again. I think that was today they hired Jim Montgomery. But the coach, I don't even know his name. Not going to work here anymore. <laughs> he was there for 22 days. I think it was a 22-day hire or something like that. It was so short. Yeah. So they fired him because Jim Montgomery got fired by the... Oh, what team was it? Um, Bruins. He was on the Bruins. Okay. Coach of the Bruins. They fired him. St. Louis is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We want our guy. We're going to fire you who is our current coach and we're going to get Jim Montgomery in here and back coaching. So within like a day or two of him being fired by the Bruins, he got hired by the St. Louis Blues. Kind of weird, uh, you know, musical that's, chairs going around in the coaching staff in the NHL. That's brutal. Yeah. Wow. That's was some, one of the shortest. Vegas Golden Knights level. Yes. It was know? one of the shortest stints of a head coach that wasn't like an interim coach. Yeah, yeah. Like he wasn't an interim coach. This was like he was introduced as the head coach and. Yeah. Wow. So, stuff going down in St. Louis. Anyway, we'll get to that game yeah. in a little bit, too, because yeah. that was against the old coach. Um, go ahead. Unreal. Um, <laughs> but back to uh, Mackenzie Blackwood, and I think where you were to go, you, you think the Blues are looking for goaltending, too, or are you just bringing them up just because? No, I was just bringing them up. But okay. um, uh, Detroit, however, has Cam Talbot in net. Yes. Cam Talbot's kind of a favorite to be on Team Canada for the upcoming tournament coming in February. Instead of the All-Star game, they're doing this international tournament. Um, I think it's only four teams, if I'm correct. It's U.S., Canada, Finland, and Sweden, maybe. I think that's it. Um, So not a lot of... A lot of guys are going to get breaks, but I think this is great. I like this... I like that they do this instead of an all-star game. I wouldn't like it every year mm-hmm. because it's kind of cool to see an all-star team. What I would like them to do, because nobody plays the all-star game seriously. That's it. They kind of make it fun, but it kind of right. gets stale after a while. And they need to reboot it and change it. Um, similar to football, like the NFL, nobody watches the Pro Bowl because nobody wants to hit hard. They're not going to get hurt, right? I think you just do like like in football, they call it the all-Madden team, right? Like it's it's just a named all-star. Yeah. Do the skills competition. I think those are great because it's fun to see little games that you could reproduce at home, but you're seeing professional athletes do it. And it's so cool. I'm getting off on a tangent. Cam Talbot is supposed to be, is a front runner as a goalie. Whereas there's a case being made that Blackwood should be the one that is going in there. Now it's hard to say because Blackwood's on the Sharks and he's not getting as much credit for being a good goaltender because he's a good goaltender and a bad team. So... This game, especially one of Eklund's goals. Did you see this highlight? The of, glove? Yes. Yeah. Bad. I mean, really that, bad. that is like peewee hockey bad. Yeah. Like, holy cow, this kid just learned how to play goalie. And I feel bad because it's a kid that's just learning to play goalie. Not an NHL goalie who goes to catch it. It's going wide and comes out of his glove and goes on the goal. And you know what's funny about peewee goalies is that glove side, they should all be the best uh, on their glove side than anywhere else, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason being is a lot of kids play multiple sports, namely baseball, baseball right? Yeah. And so if you can catch <laughs> in baseball, you probably, as a, just a reflex, are pretty decent as a goaltender with your glove, right? If you can dodge a hammer, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, can dodge a ball. Yeah, right. right. Well, he dodged this puck and it went straight into the net. <laughs> no, it, it bounced off his glove, up, yeah. grenade, yes. falls down, yes. and it explodes. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. it's pretty embarrassing, really. Yeah. yeah, that's the right word for it. I, the Sharks have a knack for scoring these goals in St. Louis. <laughs> Owen oh, Nolan at center ice against yeah. Roman Turek. Like, that's that comes to mind. I don't know. They just need yeah. to throw some bombs in St. Louis, and they're just going to land. I, I, I guess. I, hey, if it works, it works. But what didn't work uh, this, uh, this night was um, good goals coming from the Blues. We saw... Um, a lot of goals that Mackenzie Blackwood really didn't have a, a chance on, right? Mm-hmm. And it's hard to put the blame on Mackenzie Blackwood. Now, I've been called the goalie apologist uh, several years over now. But I think for me, when I take a look at the way the goal gets scored and you go, okay, did he really have like a chance here? And for 
for for the four goals that got scored, to me, they don't look so much like it's a Blackwood issue so much as a uh, a weird gaffe or something uh, that uh, was bad coverage or whatever. I mean, like in this the, the first goal, uh, Larkin had the puck in the paint, basically like totally uncontested giveaway uh, that goes up to the point, and a pass comes down to him, and he's standing by himself, and he just backhand roofs it. You know, so it's hard mm. to blame Blackwood on that one because there's no help. In front of the net, I think that was Wallman tried to clear the puck around, or at least get it up to the point to whoever was supposed to be on the wall, but no one's on the wall. Uh, and we actually, it's funny we have this discussion with the twelve U kids too. Like they're dumping the puck up the wall. It's like, are you even looking? There's <laughs> nobody there. You can't just throw the puck and, and look. We run these drills in practice, and it's like, yeah, in practice the guy's standing there because yeah. we're running the drill. But you have to get your head up and take a look. And in this case, Wallman just sends the puck where he thinks his player ought to be. And gets picked off, sent down low. Larkin gets it, backhand roof. Guys, uh, thank you for staying with us. Appreciate that. I don't know exactly where we left off, but what I was talking about earlier was uh, Mackenzie Blackwood and uh, the, the goals that went in. The Larkin getting an uncontested goal uh, off of a bad giveaway, then going on to uh, the shot that he saved, the rebound kicked out. Now, yes, rebound control, but... Again, no one was there to help clear it out. Uh, the other one was a Wenberg gaff, right? He's carrying the puck kind of out towards the front of the net. Poke uh, the, the the stick pokes it off of his, and it kind of banks in, right? Um, and then the, the other one was the power play goal, where the shot hits a sliding Mario Ferraro, and Blackwood kind of slides over. Actually, it was a pass, I think, that it was going to be. And he slides over to block you know, the shot that's coming from the other direction, but Ferraro sliding blocked the pass, and it goes right back to the guy who passed it, yeah. and he shoots it in. Again, I look at all these goals, and I go, is Mackenzie Blackwood really responsible for, I don't know, any of these? Maybe the rebound, right? Maybe the one where he shot, saved, the rebound kicked out. That's maybe a, there can be a case a for better rebound, rebound control. control. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can make a case for better rebound control there. But at the mm -hmm. same time, again... You got to have guys that are clearing out the, those high danger chances when the the puck pops out to a guy who's as close to me and you, right? Yeah. When it's that close, you've got to have coverage. Otherwise, that puck's most likely going to the back of the net. Mm -hmm. So I take a look at all those goals from the Detroit game, and I have a really hard time blaming Mackenzie Blackwood for any of that. Now you were talking about Cam Talbot as the guy potentially for Team Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's nights like this that could help ruin Mackenzie Blackwood's chances if the people aren't actually looking at the, the body of work. If they're just looking at the stats, yeah, it hurts, right? But if you look at the body of work, I think in this game specifically, Blackwood looked a lot better than mm -hmm. Talbot did. I mean, when you have that goal that goes off of the glove and in versus he makes a save, he's in the right spot, he's anticipating properly, but everything around him is just breaking down, right? And I think when you're playing for Team Canada, you're probably not going to have those types of breakdowns that you would see with a team like the San Jose Sharks. Could be wrong. Doubtful. Um, so anyway, that's what I wanted to say about <laughs> Mackenzie Blackwood, and I, I kept going back to him. But um, you, you, were, you were impressed with Eklund in this game as well. I think we already yeah, yeah. talked a little bit about it. He's got the two goals. We not just even talked this about. game, just in general. Okay. Like it, Going into the, even the next game into Dallas, he okay. had a five-game point streak going into that game. So um, uh, he has been... I mean, Granlin's obviously been great because he's a, he's a point-per-game player. He's yeah. been there every night. Eklund is right there with him, and even zetterlin has been pretty consistent. That whole line is so good right now, and that was the top line at the end of last season. And it was kind of sad because that was like, that's a good second line on a good team, right? Yeah. It's not a good top line last year. Mm -hmm. This year, they are a good second line. And they're kind of leading the team right now. But the fact that they have Toffoli and Celebrini and Smith, like they're not really playing together, but they have those combination of, of guys um, filling out. The, the team is a lot better at scoring. They haven't done it quite well enough, but they are much better than they were last year. So, but that line specifically, the Lund line, Granlund, Sutherland, and Eklund, um, have been impressive. The chemistry has been amazing between all three of them. They move the puck around so well. They kind of know exactly where the other one's going to be. Um, it's everything that you would want a line to do chemistry-wise and, and how they come together and stuff. Um, not to mention Eklund and Granlund both kill penalties. Mm -hmm. I don't think Zetterlund does, but um, he's, he's more of a... He's more of the shooter of that line, I feel like. Granlin and, and uh, Eklund are more of the passers. But every time Eklund has the puck, 
you can't get it from him. He protects it so well. Yeah. And he possesses it so well. He's his I don't have the stats, I didn't look up these advanced stats, but his his break into the zone has got to be one of the top on the team. Top three probably. Him and Granlin, I think, are up there. They're just very good possessive type players that protect the puck and make plays happen. So they're great playmakers to have on the team. So they're exciting to watch. And and to have him have him have a five game point streak is fantastic yeah. for how young he is. He's still very young. Yeah. He's a seventh overall pick from two, three years, three years ago. I think three years ago. Three yeah. drafts ago, yeah, yeah. right? So um, it, it's great to watch. Now, he's not going to be the savior that I think everyone thought he was going to be <laughs> when he was first drafted, but it shows how, why he he kind of fell to the Sharks in seventh and why it was considered that he fell down because he sh- probably should have been the top four yeah. uh, pick. But I'm glad he wasn't because I'm glad the Sharks got him. He's great, great player. Yeah, he's fantastic. Every time he touches the puck, you, you get this sense that something magical is going to happen. And it's it's kind of that same Mac and Celebrini feeling, right? Every time he touches the puck, you're kind of on the edge of your seat just waiting to see what he's going to do, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Eklund, for me, is kind of the same way. I've seen him uh, is multiple times over now. He, he loves that little pass behind uh, as he's cruising behind the net. Yes. And if yes. he's coming in on the right, going to the left, that puck's coming out the right-hand side yeah. before he crosses, right? I feel like we all know and we're yeah, waiting for it, yeah. and the other team has no idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and obviously the Sharks seem to know because uh, when they get into that that uh, medium high slot area, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're just waiting to see, okay, he's going to unload this puck to me before he gets behind that net, and they're ready to go. Yep. Um, so, again, with him, I, I love the speed of the game. I love the vision the vision for me, I, and again, I've talked about this before with, with playmakers, right? It's not just good passers. It's guys who can make a play. And William Eklund is one of those guys. Um, he has the ability to, you know, see where the skating lanes are and where the passing lanes are and not get them confused, right? A lot of times guys will get fixated on trying to make that pass when they have open ice to work with. Eklund takes that open ice, but he's got his head up all the time and he's finding these lanes and he's creating these lanes. And it's always something magical happening with him. And you say, you know, people were, he, you don't think he's going to be the savior that people thought he was going to be. I don't think he needs to be the savior. I think we, we got guys that are kind of uh, going to have that uh, position on this team. I think William Eklund's going to fit in just fine being a second best, like mm-hmm. solid prime playmaker, right? Oh, we good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We have. See, this is what happens. Hit the wrong when, button. This is what happens when you're gone, right? For for a, a week or so, and then everything just kind of falls. Now I'm back. Okay. I don't want to hear about freaking fragile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so you just work, working the gremlins out for the people on the podcast. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Um, no, but I, I, I love what William Eklund brings uh, to this team, and I think he's a very good complementary piece yes. to the very young talent that's going to be taking the spotlight uh, in future years. And William Eklund is just kind of have a fantastic <laughs> career, kind of just outside of that. Uh, that all the, the bright lights, I think, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to his growth. And again, like you said, he is still very, very young. We have an 18-year-old and a 19-year-old on this team. Um, and I think he's next in line in terms of uh, how, how young the guy is. Yeah. So just a, a phenomenal talent. And he's he's still blossoming. That's the crazy thing. He's he's a, a physical guy too, as well. Yes. Like you said, you know, he loves to protect it, not just with the moves. And it's, we all seen the spin moves and everything else, right? Yeah. But he loves to protect it in a very physical sense. Mm-hmm. Um, he attacks hard on the body. He does all the things that you want a forward to do. Uh, so very impressed with William Mecklen lately. I do have to agree with you. Um, although honestly, I'm just, I'm not surprised. We've seen him, and I, I even said this in previous seasons. What was the, the the best part of watching last season? I think who was it that asked us that question at the, uh, the draft par- uh, Drew. The draft party? Wasn't was it, it Drew? Drew? Yeah. He said, "What's the what, what did you like the best about that?" And I said, "Honestly, it was for me it was William Eklund watching him grow." Yeah. I think you said Zetterlin, but uh, William Eklund for me it was watching him grow last season was like the most exciting thing. Uh, for me and for this season, obviously, it's Macklin Celebrini, right? Mm-hmm. And and a, a close second is the continued uh, development of William Macklin. That's kind of what the uh, the joy of this season is all about. And one other thing we talked about uh, before we went live is William Macklin, his kind of nasty oh, yeah. spell that he has, right? He has a, he has some grit to him. He's not just a finesse player. He he gets in people's faces and. Uh, does not back down from a scrum ever. He gets like you touch the goalie, he's in your face. Yeah. You 
you uh, you hit him the wrong way, he's in your face. So he, I felt like he kind of honed in on that last season because they kind of looked at him and were like, you don't have any help right now. Like, there's nobody here to help you. Yeah. You need to figure this out and you need to kind of grow up and mature a little bit and uh, throw it back to them. Like, don't, don't take any stuff from anyone yeah, yeah. to keep it family friendly. <laughs> so um, I think he kind of honed in on that last year and I think he carried that into this. Added that to his game because I don't think it was quite there. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think it was quite there when he first started. Um, or at least I never saw any of it. So now it's like every time he's on the ice and there's a scrum, I'm like, oh, Eklund's going to yeah. get in there. I know he's going to just <laughs> face wash someone, you know, just kind of do some of that stuff that Joe Thornton used to do. Yeah. I mean, Joe Thornton was so much bigger than him, mm-hmm. but he just doesn't back down. And it's great to see. We need more like that. More like that from everybody, not just a couple of people. Everyone needs to have that. Absolutely. And uh, a guy who actually, you, you see a little bit of it, uh, Macklin Celebrini, same thing. You've yes. seen him in, yes. in some of these scrums. He doesn't back down. Yeah. And yes, he's only 18 years old. Yes, the bones are still soft, like I said. Uh, but uh, again, six feet tall, still growing. And, uh, you know, again, I've seen him in these scrums where somebody kind of pushes him a little bit and he turns and just cross checks this yeah. guy like right in the elbow which has got to hurt, you know, but like he doesn't back down from yep. anyone. And you think about the the level of fitness that he has, right? Obviously with his dad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, instilling that whole culture into him. Um, and, you know, the way he, that, you know, he impressed at the, the combines and everything else, all, all, anything that had to do with fitness and whatnot, everything was, man, this kid is just, he's there in yeah. terms of fitness level. He's ready for the show. He's ready for the grind of that many games. He's peak fitness. Like Absolutely. The, he probably has zero body fat on because he just <laughs> works out constantly. And he's going to get bigger. Right. Like yeah. That's the crazy thing. So even at 18 years old, and I, I heard one of the commentators say this, um, you know, he's he may be young, but he's not like gangly young. Yeah. He's a solid little dude. Yeah. And he's not going to back down from anyone. He took a really big hit, and he's like, yeah, that that doesn't bother Macklin, folks. Don't worry. He's okay. <laughs> he's not this little boy that everyone thinks he is because he's 18. He's he's like a young man. This dude is, is you know, fit. He can handle hits like that. They don't bother him. Um, and on the topic of Macklin Celebrini, the game we were talking about for the past 25 minutes, whatever it is, <laughs> the Detroit game, Ugh. goes to OT, and who, who else, right? Macklin. Comes up with the puck. Now, this one, going from Eklund to the next London line, uh, Granlin, he gets the puck, brings it across mm-hmm. the blue line. Everybody thought this was offside, but he did a great job getting his feet into the zone, pulling the puck in, and even though, uh, I guess... There's a special rule. Yes, because his feet were in the zone and he's in possession of the puck, it's still considered onside. If you're in the possession and you skate in backwards, yes. that's onside. Yes. Which is, he kind of, like, turned and... I think it kind of threw everyone off a little too. Yeah. Like they might have just stuttered just a little bit because they're like, oh, it's offside. It's going to yeah. blow dead. And then, oh, no, it's not. Um, I think I've also noticed this a lot. Linesmen are not calling offsides when it's close anymore. They're letting the play happen. So that they can review it later. Because yeah. they can review it. Before they could review yeah. it, they would call it dead. Now they're kind of like, let's let it play out and see what happens. If it's close, I think they're instructed. I don't, I'm, I'm speculating here. I right. think they're instructed. If it's close, don't call it. Because we will get the call right in the replay. Yeah. So let the play happen. And this was one of those plays where it kind of like at the eye test, you're kind of like, uh, did he have possession? Because yeah. he was also getting stick checked at the same time. Yeah. Did, was it offside? Well, we'll review it. And then they scored. And you're like, okay, well, we'll have to review it. And there was a delay of was this a goal or not? And yeah. then they called it a good goal. So the that was just to get onside. Then, then right. the puck goes over to Macklin and he pulls off his nice little move. Uh, gives a little, a very quick little stick handle as he's breaking in towards the net and mm-hmm. just a little boom, boom like that. And then just like we try to teach the kids is instead of loading up and firing from that, it's that quick little stick handle and that those those low kick points and the low flex sticks, guys, this is what they're for right here is <laughs> when you have that little stick handle and then you just pop those hands out and in one motion it just snaps like this and you get so much whip on the stick with those types of, of sticks, those low kicks, the low flex. Now, Macklin, I don't know what he has. I'm sure it's much higher than anything I would ever use, <laughs> right? But he's far stronger than I've ever been or will ever be. And, uh, yeah, he, he makes this thing just a, a beautiful shot. It goes right underneath the arm, right over the pad, right inside the net. Game over. Mm. Um, and, again, it was just a great play, a great heads-up play by Granlin. And a great job by Macklin to make sure that he just keeps going until you hear the whistle. Play until you hear the whistle. 
and he beats the defender, beats the goalie, and everyone's happy. Celebrations all around. It was fantastic. And we do have uh, a stat on this from Darren Stevens. Oh. So here it is. Uh, this is from Blue Sky. Uh, Darren Stevens. Macklin Celebrini, age 18 years and 158 days, is the youngest player in the Sharks' history to score an overtime goal. The previous was Jeff Friesen. He was 18 and 235 days on March 28, 1995 versus the Jets. The only younger player to score OT and goals since 83-84 season ever in the NHL, Sidney Crosby, 18-101 and 18-146, and, and Jordan Stahl at 18-153. So he just missed out on the second most behind Crosby because of Jordan Stahl. Beat him by five days, which is ridiculous. But um, amazing. Uh, you, I, it's funny, you watch him play, and I keep saying it. I keep going... This kid is 18. Yeah. Like, it is insane how young he is and how good he is. He plays like a, I don't know, 21, 22-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you just think that he's older and you forget that he's 18 years old. This kid is going to be, he's going to be so good mm-hmm. for so long for the Sharks. I don't know if the casual fan kind of quite understands right. how phenomenal this guy is. Because think Patrick Marlowe, right? Patrick Marlowe was the only, and Friesen too, but Marlowe was more consistent than Friesen was. Marlowe started around same, like that super young and jumped into the NHL and was producing at an okay rate. This kid blows him out of the water. No offense to Marlowe, yeah, of course. but he was a little more sheltered. Uh, the team was a little structured different than it is now, but um, he's going to be so good for so long. Think think in terms of Marlowe. How long did Marlowe play on the Sharks? Mm-hmm. This is how long Celebrini is going to be here because they are going to lock him up mm-hmm. when they can for a long time. He's going to be a shark for a long time. So Patrick Morell is Mr. Shark. Celebrity is going to be Mr. Junior Shark. I don't, I don't know what else to call it. Because he did play with the Junior Sharks too. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to clear something Mr. up. Mr. Shark quick. Junior? I'm going to clear something up real quick with the whole. Ju- so he played one year right. with the Junior Sharks. Because he moved. But the Junior Sharks, and again, obviously this is a shark show and I have no problem with the Sharks, but the Junior Sharks like to claim him as their own. Oh, yeah. No, he was, he was the Junior Shark. They guys, have a picture. They guys, have a picture to prove it. Guys, please. He played for you for a year, but let's let it go. Okay, you didn't develop this guy. All right, <laughs> He's, you didn't develop him. It's okay. All right, we could be happy that he wore the colors beforehand, and that's fantastic. But you didn't develop him. All right. I mean, that's just... that's kind of the hope of all of those teams, right? Is yeah. To have somebody that makes it to the NHL, not even just first overall, just in sure. the NHL in general, anywhere, and you get to boast about it. Yes, that's. That's normal. 100%. Every club team does that. A hundred percent they do. Absolutely. How many and clubs then, get to boast about having the first overall pick? It's how not many that podcasts many? have to sit here in seven straight? Every single oh, one of them. Geez. There you go. Fantastic. I love the bell, my friend. Um, okay. So, Macklin scores. OT winner. Everybody's happy. And we move on to Dallas. Yes. Right? This trip was brutal. Like, just in yeah. terms of, like, the scheduling was pretty rough. The whole month is pretty rough. In fact, the Sharks have played kind of the most games in the NHL. They've played 23 right now. Uh, let me see. I think that tops. Yeah. Yeah. There's only more. Pittsburgh and New Jersey and the Sharks have played 23 games. Everyone else has played less. So they've had a lot of work, especially this month alone. It's been, I think I talked about this earlier. Um, might have been last week. Um, they have 15 games in 30 days of November. Yeah. So they're not all quite spaced out they do have some breaks because they have some back-to-backs but right. that's a lot of hockey mm-hmm. they have they had four games this last week they have four games this upcoming week and there's thanksgiving <laughs> in there which they don't play like nobody plays on thanksgiving yeah. but it's it's sandwiched it's so it it this is why will smith is getting breaks because that is a lot of hockey to be played in a very short amount of time and their bodies maybe even their mental capacity isn't even quite ready for it yet because they're so new what yeah. Don't get me started on Will Smith tonight, please. Oh, hi. Please. I'm going to be suspended for another week <laughs> if you get me started on Will Smith tonight. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm wow. sorry. Are you upset? Don't, don't don't set me off on Will Smith. Let's stay on Dallas, please. <laughs> All right. Dallas game. Go ahead. <laughs> Dallas game. Uh, so there were it, the final score was 5-2. to two, Yeah. But as you mentioned here, there's, there's two empty net goals here. So it looks a lot worse than it actually was. Realistically, the, the, the game was 3-2, and the Sharks decided, ah, let's just go for it, right? Um, and, and to Dallas's credit, they get two empty netters. Pretty fantastic. 
Uh, the Sharks again. I think last season, any especially when, when back when we had uh, EK sixty five, yes, we were known as the empty net team, yes, uh, constantly. Which I guess, in, in a way, you can look at that as a positive because we're constantly so close, right? We're yes. always right there, but we just couldn't get that extra one, and so therefore we pull the goalie and we get scored on. Um, but prior to that, gosh, we were right there, right? Um, and in this game, no different. Again, three to two, Sharks decided to pull the goalie. Uh, Dallas scores twice uh, to, to make it a 5-2 to two game. Looks a whole lot worse than it actually was. But you've got some stats here on Blackwood. And again, Blackwood in net plays fantastic. Yep. Stands on his head. Does a great job. Uh, this was, let's see. So, three goals against. Not five goals against for right. him. So, his save percentage is actually 897. Just under 900. Um, and at that point, he was still 910 save percentage on the season. Mm. Which... When's the last time a shark has had nine ten save percentage? Yeah. It's been a long. It's pre Jones era. It's been a long time. Yeah. So the sharks goaltending is finally doing well. Yeah. Hey, somebody who had nine ten and were like a quarter of the way into the season, not yes. like after a game or two where they had a shutout. And right. you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, having a decent body of work on the season so far and and had a nine ten save percentage. I mean, if you look, the sharks do have a, a large goal differential. But a lot of that is empty net goals. Mm. It's not the goaltending. So it kind of skews the stats a little bit, makes the team look a lot worse than it is. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying the team is great. The team is not great. They're they're progressing and getting better, but it's a big difference than last year. I mean, again, a lot of casual fans look at the record and they go, Sharks are almost dead last in the league again. Yeah. What's going on? This team is so much more exciting to watch, so much better. They're in practically every game. I mean... Empty netters. How many empty netters this week alone, right? Yeah. So um, they're in every game. It's it's competitive. They're not getting blown out anymore. Uh, the Sharks are much, much better. But, yes, going back to Blackwood, um, save percentage, he's playing well. He keeps the, keeps the Sharks within striking distance. He keeps them competitive and keeps them in the game. So uh, hats off to him once again in this game. Now, one of these games, I, can't, I forget which one it was. Which is the one that Banachek got hurt? Was it the Dallas game? Or... I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> One of them uh, wasn't the Dallas game. I, I know Which Askarov was? gets called up in the next game, and this is likely because Vanacek was out, right? So uh, It was before that, sorry. Because okay. Askarov was on the bench for the Red Wings game. So uh, Vanacek was out. So okay. Blackwood played those two games, and then we'll get to the next one. But Okay. Uh, what do we have here in the next one? Well, the next one is the back-to-back in St. Louis. I don't know if right. we were done in Dallas. Yeah, that's it for Dallas, right? Yeah. So then um, that Eklund got another point, I believe, in that game too, right? Uh, in the Dallas game. That was the end of his... Yeah, he got an assist in that game. So that was his five his points in five games. Mm-hmm. So his streak got to that game. Then we go into flying from Dallas straight up to, to St. Louis and play a back-to-back. And because it's a back-to-back, generally you see a goaltending change. And who was called up, of course? Yaroslav Askarov. Uh, it's so much fun to say his name. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. funny. The, the day before in the game in Dallas, they were asking, uh, they were asking <laughs> Warsawski, who's going to start today and who's going to start tomorrow? And he said, Blackwood will be starting today. Yeah. I'm focused on this game. Yeah. He knew yeah. Askarov was going to be called. It was going to be a, the goalie for St. Louis, right? But he didn't want to say it. Because that would be the story. Right. Keep it focused here. Yes. Tomorrow's a different day. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to play my hand right now. You're going to have to keep guessing, which everybody knew was going to be Askarov on the back-to-back. Yeah. So, go ahead. So, Askarov in, in the St. Louis game. Unless you're, we're, again, we're done with Dallas. Yep. Okay, we don't need to talk about yeah, five, two loss. losses. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of losses. If we didn't talk, we right. wouldn't have a show. Yes. Let's get real. But uh, this one here, uh, Askarov gets the call. Everyone's super excited about this to see the young goalie come in and prove to the Nashville Predators, you guys didn't know what you were doing, okay? You, you should have played me when you had me. You don't deserve me anymore, and I'm going to come out and I'm going to show you from the drop of the puck what you're missing. And he did exactly that. 11 <laughs> seconds in, they score. <laughs> 11 seconds in. Okay, so he gets the puck behind the net. They dump it in off the faceoff. He gets the puck behind the net, plays it up the wall to... Nobody, and it goes uh, for, to I don't even know who the player was. One of the other players, um, whoever the, got the first assist. Was that whoever got the the primary assist? Yeah, right? so it goes to the, one of the St. Louis players, Faxa. Faxa. Yeah, and he rips it down low to Walker. Walker. Okay, and I mean, I was talking about this the other day. It was bad luck. 
yes. obviously to turn it over, right? But what luck does Faxa have to block it? Not only just block it and stop it, because it was rimming around the boards, yeah. right? And it goes right to his stick, yep. and he just quickly plays it to yep. Walker, who's right in front, and taps it. It was like, it was a, such a bang bang play. It's like, man, it's bad luck for one that he turned it over. Really bad luck that they went right to the guy's stick. Really bad luck that there was a guy right in front of the yeah. net. Right. Yeah. Welcome, not to the NHL because he's playing the NHL, but welcome to the Sharks. No, I mean, yeah, okay, he's playing the NHL, but I don't know if there's because guys have this welcome to the NHL moment. Right, and it's not necessarily on day one or game one where they're playing. Right, it's it's something that happens that is just like a slap in the face. Oh yeah, I'm playing in the NHL. I can't imagine in the two games that he got with Nashville that something like this happened to him. Maybe I don't know. I wasn't a Nashville fan, but um, if if there was something, other, okay, fine. But if not for those two games in this game, that was definitely your welcome to the NHL moment. Right. Um, to play that puck around, and then there's a guy standing right in your crease. He just taps it right in. 11 seconds into the game, first shot so on goal, brutal. and it goes in, and you're going, oh, my God. Now, as a Sharks fan and somebody who knows that this guy is going <laughs> to be a fantastic goaltender, I wasn't exactly panicked here, and I'm sure a lot of people were going, oh, my God, 11 seconds in, right? But it was so early. There's a it, lot of it, hockey There's left. a lot of hockey. Yeah. Um, the amount of saves this guy made, the amount of big saves he made directly yes. after that, to me, that speaks more than the fact that he misplayed the puck and let one in 11 seconds in. The bounce back, what he did after that, mm-hmm. uh, to me, is what you're looking forward to in the years to come. His ability to shake that off, let's just keep playing, right? And yep. he made save after save after save. Mm-hmm. He looked fantastic. And again, another really young guy stepping into the NHL and doing a great job and giving the fans something to look forward to for future seasons to come. I was impressed with his athleticism for how large of a guy he is. I think I want to say he's 6'3", which is pretty big for a goalie. Yeah. Um, there was a save specifically where he was practically full splits oh, yeah. across the goal, not just full splits, but having the leg strength to kick that pad out yeah. and stop a couple chances there. I was impressed. I was impressed with that save, obviously. Yeah. Um, part of the other reason I think he's going to do well, obviously he's athletic, mm-hmm. obviously he's a great goalie, but he's a right-handed catch. And I think it throws so yeah. many players off because... Players are instinctively used to goalies catching with their left. So you shoot low stick side, right? Or whatever. So when you switch it and it's opposite, you're so used to shooting when you're on in this position on the ice or this position in the ice. Mm-hmm. This is where you're going to shoot. This is where you're going to shoot because that's where you're going to get the higher percentage of goals. And it's now reversed. Yeah. Now you have to kind of think about it and you stutter just a little bit or you just try and do it how you normally do it and he's making those saves. So I think that's going to benefit him, and it does benefit him already. I remember when the Sharks were in their heyday, and they had Pavelski and Thornton and all those guys. Every time they played a right-handed catch goalie, I'm like, you guys keep shooting to his glove side. Like, <laughs> stop it. They just don't think about it. They, don't, yeah. they forget about it. So I think that's going to play to his advantage. And you know what? You, you think about it, and you think of all the – some. think of all the big-name hockey players, right? With the exception of Ovechkin, a lot of the big name hockey players you could think of are left handed shooting, mm-hmm. right? And if you think about that, if you're left handed shooting, okay, and you're skating in on a goalie and he's a left glove, that means on your strong side is his stick side, right? And now all of a sudden you've got this right handed catch. And now you've got to deal with instead of somebody who's trying to get the blocker up when you're trying to go to top shelf, they just raise their glove. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Right handed glove. Right. So um, it's it's something definitely different to deal with where you think you can go top shelf over that stick side and all of a sudden there's a glove there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's true for, again, those those left handed shooting guys, which I think make up the majority of players in the league being left handed. Um, I mean, listen to this list of right handed oh. goalies. Uh, Roman Turk. Yeah. Tom Barrasso. OK. Uh, Tony Esposito. Yeah. yeah. Grant Fuhr. Mm. Right. Like. They throw people off. Yeah. They're you're a good goalie anyway. Yeah. Those guys are good goalies, but um, it throws people off, and I think their numbers are going to be a little bit better because of it. Slightly. I mean, it's just you, all you need is a slight advantage. Yeah. Right. Just enough. Just a nudge. So there was again the the gaff goal, right? The one where he kind of rims it and 
welcome to the NHL. 11 mm-hmm. seconds in, okay? The other goal that gets scored on him, again, I said he had save after save after save. The other goal that gets scored on him is one that goes from the wall, a pass to Jordan Cairo, who's sitting in front of the net, mm-hmm. not by himself. He's sitting in front of the net with Granlin and I think Liljegren, uh draped on this guy. Like He was wearing them like a cloak. And somehow they didn't tie up his stick. His stick is down. And again, in the paint, he gets a little one-time like tap. And it goes in. And I think it even went off his pad first and then it went in. It's hard to fault him for that goal. Yes, the first one, 100% is fault. Sure. It's hard to fault him on that goal when you've got two guys covering one guy, but nobody ties up his stick. And he's in the paint. Right, and you're sliding because the puck's on the wall, and it passes across, and now you have to slide towards the middle again. So yeah, you're moving as well. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to fault him for that one there. But let's just throw it to the side for now. He made so many good saves that if you forget about that one, and you forgive the the (laughs) eleven second one, right? I mean, what a fantastic performance by a young goalie a rookie essentially right he's had a couple games yes but it's only been a couple of games uh what a fantastic performance and what a statement game for him Uh, and again i love the fact that yes he gave up that early goal but man did he battle and he didn't let it get to him it didn't get between his ears that's big yeah mentally that's big absolutely be able to bounce back from that awful giveaway is is speaks volumes of his character and i think some goalies would have a hard time bouncing back from just getting scored on it right. in 11 seconds. Right. Let alone the fact that I got scored on because of something that I did specifically. Because I had to go out of the net and play the puck. Right? I think most goalies, even if they're square and set and 11 seconds in, they shoot and they score, that's going to get between their ears. This guy yeah. screwed up and it went in the back of the net. Yep. And he had such a great performance for the rest of the game. It's Ted Lasso of oh boy. Be a Goldfish. Goldfish have a memory of six seconds. <laughs> You still haven't watched that show. I have not bothered to watch it, no. Yeah. <sighs> Who are you? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Be a goldfish. Yes. And that's what he did. Okay. His best goldfish impression. I'm very, very happy for him. Uh, in this game, <laughs> Wenberg. Come, I tell you what. I'm really liking Wenberg. Comeback kids, man. What a fantastic yes. grab by GM uh, Silky. GM Silky. Oh, yes. Yeah. I heard that. <laughs> If you saw, the, you, if you, you saw see the, the look on his face, face the look yes, on his face, he's like, oh, man, now the world knows." <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess uh, Joe Thornton has a nickname for everybody. That's his main thing. He he gives nicknames to everybody, and uh, he gave nickname to uh, not then GM, but to his fellow teammate, teammate yeah. Mike Greer, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he called him Silky. Yes, uh, well, fantastic. I imagine it had something to do with the mitts, but uh, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe it was a sarcastic uh, yeah. view of his mitts. <laughs> he was not oh known God. for his puck and his skills. <laughs> Mike Greer. Uh, um, anyway, um, yeah, Wenberg. Silky with, with, with a great pickup here. <laughs> yes. Alexander Wenberg. Yes, um, absolutely. What a leader, first mm-hmm. of all, on the mm-hmm. ice. Uh, fantastic face-off, man. I didn't realize uh, how, how potent he was offensively. Until he played for the Sharks, where he gets more opportunities to do it, right? Absolutely. Um, but no, he's actually stood out quite a bit. I'm super happy with the pickup, and he's one of those guys that we talk about. You know, the Sharks um, having a lot of bottom six type players. This is one of those guys to me that is like that middle six, right? Yeah. If you get an injury in that that second line, he can play up, no problem, right? He's gonna and, and it'll work flawlessly. And also get second power play minutes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I'm loving Alexander Wimberg. I think he's a fantastic pickup, and he's I think he's brought quite a bit to this team. He's got uh, five goals and seven assists. Yeah. And Twelve points in twenty three games. That's every yeah. other game he's getting a point. That's pretty good. It's fantastic. That's a what forty point pace, 42, 45 absolutely. point pace. That's, yeah. I'll take that from a kind of, I guess, a third line center. Yeah. If you will. Second yeah. line center. Third line center. Well, on another team. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, very, very happy with him. Now, you've got uh, a, a tweet here, I think, from Darren Sip. Wait, yes. it's, it's not, but it's not a tweet. Is it a, po- it's on Blue Sky. Cause it's see, we're, Blue Sky. We're trying to push Blue Sky a little bit more here. Yeah. Actually, it's a just, lot more. But. Twitter, it's just kind of going into the, 
dumpster. Not, not a fan. Not yeah, a fan. not a fan as okay. much. Um, a lot of people are coming over to Blue there's Sky. There's been a mass migration over to Blue Sky yeah. in the last month okay and uh, Darren Stevens being one of them Darren Stevens is now over there you're seeing more writers come over more yeah. more media people are coming over so uh it's starting to build up it's kind of nice and refreshing too because I mean I started my Twitter account in 2010 it's been so long that it's just full of junk at this point right yeah. it's almost like you hit a reset button and you're you're starting fresh again so um and it's all people that are active because there's so many people on Twitter that don't even use their accounts anymore so it's just like yeah you have like you know, a couple thousand followers and there's a hundred active, right? Like it's just, you don't get as much interaction. It's not as fun. So this is, there's less bots. There's less junk out there. So, uh, we're, we're, I've been using it a lot lately and getting a lot of interaction with people. Anyway, so here it is. This is the, the post, I guess you will, from Darren Stevens, uh, with tonight's game tying goal by Alex Wenberg. The Sharks have five game-tying goals within the final 10 minutes of regulation, which wow. is the most in the NHL. So if it feels like the Sharks seemingly keep coming back, it's because they are. They are. They yeah. are. They're leading the league in, in comebacks. So was that out of at that point? Uh, what was that game, the St. Louis game? I love that it said within the final 10 minutes, and this is within the, the last nine seconds. That's five of their 22 games. Yeah. They've come back and tied the game. Now, if you go back to... I hate to go back to last season, but um, how many games did we lose by a goal last season? Like all those empty netters, right? Yeah, yeah. Now you're starting to see, okay, five of those games, they've actually tied it. Yeah. That's five points that mm-hmm. they didn't have last year. So that's kind of making up the difference of last year again, showing how much they're jumping up, yeah. jumping up in the standings as much as they are, but uh, not leading the league to the bottom and getting the first overall pick again. So, um Happy to see it. I there's no way you should turn off a Sharks game at this point, even if they're losing, until the very last second. I mean, this was nine seconds left in the game and they tied it. So um, I was on the couch watching this one and I jumped up and screamed, <laughs> celebrating. I think I was watching with my son. We were just like, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny you say that because I did the exact same thing. Yeah. We, we were sitting on the couch and um, I haven't I haven't done that in a long time. Yes, for for a Sharks game, and it's not because it just hasn't happened. But even last season, I was going, you know, hey, that's great if we look good, but man, we should really be losing, right? Um, this season, I feel it's a little bit different here. I'm not like rooting for us to like get <laughs> loose. I'm not rooting for us to get Macklin. We already have Macklin. I'm good. You just saw right? what? the last guy. I wouldn't mind another first overall pick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, no, no, do it. The way, I, but I want the Sharks to get the first overall pick by winning the lottery. Being in the bottom 10, yeah. not being the worst, yeah. and possibly losing the lottery. That's the worst. If they were in last place <laughs> and they and some other team won the lottery, that would suck. Yeah, Because you're just like, oh, the first overall pick is ours. We're going to get it. And then they don't win it. And you're like, yeah. oh, now you feel like you lost it. So I would rather get it winning the lottery, not being in that first top three pick. I think that would be amazing. Or bottom three, whatever team. That would, that would be the way I would want to get it yeah. from now on. I, I, that was awful. Last year sucked. <laughs> they that won the lottery sucked. three times. If you saw, they did. It. They did. They they the ball got picked. And no three team had times. ever won twice. Yeah. And the Sharks won three. Yeah. That was crazy. We're, they're so good at winning. I'm confident in our chances if we if we get. Or they blew them all on that one <laughs> that one draft lottery. Yeah. That's it. We'll never again get it. Um. But yes. But again. Um, this season is a little bit different. So when that when that goal went in with nine seconds left. Um, I jumped off the couch, nice little fist pump, the scream, right? The yeah. Uh, the kids were like excited about it too. And like, you know, again, my, my oldest Jay was like, yeah, you know, so yeah. like we were, we were all like, again, happy, screaming, excited Sharks fans. And we just haven't been that for a while. So that one was really nice to, to see that one going and uh, just, just really exciting, you know, again, to have, uh, to have it get down to the wire, have it yeah. be really tight, be exciting. And they come out on top because they have enough talent to do it now. You know what I mean? Yep. So, uh, yeah, again, just uh, just a fantastic game there. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, it goes to the, the shootout and they lose. Ugh. But uh, <laughs> shaking just his head. Get rid of the shootout already. I'm so sick of it. The Sharks are going to go 0 for 20 on the shootout this season. So, would you? okay, would you rather it go just overtime and then if not, then just a tie? Gee, just 
flip a coin at that no, point. No, but, like, but you can't... It, the, it's the same thing as doing a shootout then. So they, they always go, the coin flip is stupid. But they would have more points if they, go, if they went to a coin flip. The chances are they would win one of those. <laughs> no. No? No. Oh. Yeah, we used, we used a bottle of luck on Macklin. I mean, <laughs> I would just... I don't know. I'm fine with ties, so I don't yeah. really care. I'd also... The amount of overtime games adds... That's five minutes each yeah. to each player, right? Or to yeah. each team. That's a lot more minutes in the end of the season of more hockey. More than the 82 games that they're already playing. I, I'm just... I don't know. That doesn't bother me at all. Come on. I like the three-on-three. Three. Yeah. I like the three-on-three three overtime. I think it's exciting. I think I love it. They did it because it was four on four for a while, and that just kind of got stale. But then it went three on three. What before they went three on three, it was four on four. Was it really? Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah. No. So I like the three on three. Um, I think it'd be hilarious if there was a penalty and they did three on two instead of making four it four on three. <laughs> In line, they do that because you only have well, four players, four four. so you can go down to two players. Oh, you can for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. It's, they don't push it up. It's to five. really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. so tiring. It really is. For the yeah. for the PK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, Actually, man. it's not really because the two guys are pretty much standing there going, please just shoot yeah. the puck already. Let our <laughs> shoot it so we can get the rebound. Yeah, there's yeah. not much we can do here. Just kind of standing here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun. But um, yeah, so they end up losing this game uh, and and it, it doesn't take away from the excitement still, you know? It was still one of those things where, you know, we're watching it and we're pumped and we're jazzed. And yeah, yeah, they lose in the, in, in the shootout, but uh, you still got to watch really good hockey and you still got to have those moments, you know? So it didn't really take away too much. And like you said, it's just, it's a skills competition. It right? is. So it, it really shouldn't take away one way or the other. The way I see it, the Sharks were nine seconds away from not getting a point. They stole one. Exactly, yeah. So, okay, fine. We don't get the second point, whatever. If we lose, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's we still stole a point. I don't Happy. mind when you tie the when you tie the yes. game up. I like, yeah. I don't care if you lose or not after that. Like, yeah. I, mean, I guess I care, but it, it doesn't hurt as much as sure. if you, the other team ties it when you have the lead and it's so deflating. You're like, yeah. oh, my God, that, that was two points right there just waiting for it. Um and then when you like, if you let's say that happens, and then you you're they win in overtime or the shootout, then you're like, oh thank God, yeah, oh they didn't blow it completely, <laughs> like that just sucks. So this was one of the last games that their coach had before he got fired, St. Louis. Oh, <laughs> and I wonder if that was part of it. Yeah, maybe because they couldn't close the game out. Yeah, against the lowly Sharks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on from this one was the Buffalo game. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Buffalo game first, though. First, before the Buffalo yes. game, was the Joe Thornton. Now, do you want to do the roll call now so that they can tell us as we're talking about it, or do you want to do it afterwards? Uh, we'll do it during the clip. During the clip. Yep. Okay. Before we do the clip. Um, okay, Joe Thornton retirement ceremony. This was awesome. I missed the Marlowe one. That was two years ago now. Mm. Um I don't even remember where I was, but I couldn't get to it. So um, I didn't really get to watch a lot of it or even I just saw kind of highlights of it. So this was kind of my first banner uh, raising jersey retirement for me. Um, it was fantastic because I thought they did a great job. I'm sure they had practice because they had Marlos before. So they, they kind of knew what to do and, and what not to do. Um, they had so many former players, like practically anyone that he'd ever played with on the Sharks. They called them up and said, do you want to be there? And they absolutely yeah you're paying for it we'll be there yeah and they were there you know who was there and i, I got a picture of him because he was on the jumbotron the owner hustle Platner, yes. was in the house yeah and that's i don't want to say it's rare because when we mentioned that um who was it i was think it drew becker. oh becker yeah jonathan becker said he's actually here a lot that he just doesn't want any yeah. notice of it he so, stays in the shadows yeah, yeah so you just don't see him so um but he was at the game and, and waved to the crowd and they put him on the big screen. I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, so many people um, on the stage with Thornton was Ryan Clough, mm-hmm. Patrick Marlowe, Joe Pavelski, and Douglas Murray. And they each gave a speech. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, there was a bunch of players that were there. They played the night before. They did the Legends game, which I couldn't get to and I really wanted to. And I didn't even get to watch it. Um but I did see some highlights of Nabokov making a save. Did you see that? No. He robbed somebody, and then they all just mobbed him. Like both both teams, like came like the guy who shot it was mad, and then yeah. everyone else was just like congratulating him. <laughs> uh, they're like, "Hi, oh, Nabby, still got it." He's, yeah, fantastic. Um, 
But anyway, Joe gets up there and and starts ribbing some guys. Like I got a video. I didn't I didn't get a clip for for Jason yeah, to yeah, put yeah. on here, but um, I recorded the one where they were doing all the where he was he gave all the nicknames. Joe Thornton yeah. gives out nicknames, and he was going through all of them. I'm like, oh, this is so good. Um, but anyway, so many people are chiming in that he was he's such a great person. Not like as great of a hockey player he was. Yeah, he's even better as a person outside of hockey. Um, I did have tears in my eyes mm. when Douglas Murray gave his speech. When he talked about the homeless lady that they got an apartment for. Did you hear that part? I, I only heard him speaking. Uh, uh, Joe. Yeah. So um, he was like, I got this, Douglas Murray is like, I got this phone call from Joe. And he says, hey, you know, we're going to help some, move some people in. I need some help moving furniture in. Meet me at this place. He's like, so I pull up his apartment. I'm like, where are we? Like, we're somewhere in San Jose. He's like, I don't even know where we are. And Joe's like, yeah, um, there's a homeless woman with two ki- two kids, and Joe and his wife got them an apartment, and they're moving them in. No publicity, nothing, nobody wow. knew. Doug's is like, this was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I think it's safe that I could tell everyone uh. now, <laughs> because nobody knows this thing, because that's just the kind of people that they are. Yeah. Him and his wife, like, they just love people and take care of them and they're just really good people and i was like oh man i was so touched by it unreal so that was like you know everyone almost had a tearjerker but but that's like kind of the outside of hockey kind of stuff that they do and and how much they bring to um the organization as a whole but like the city itself like everything around them right yeah they touch so many people and, and it's so great um so anyway i don't know if you have anything else you want to add about joe and his speeches I mean, I, I, I loved how he, the contrast between Joe and Patty mm-hmm. in their speeches mm-hmm. and their demeanor and everything. I mean, they couldn't be two <laughs> more completely different people, right? Um, Patrick Marlowe, very calm, chill, reserved, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, the, the well-spoken type. And he just, I'm going to point out to this guy and they... Jumbo gets up to the stage <laughs> and he's like, Yeah, San Jose! Yeah. He was Let me loving hear it. You. He was loving it. Yeah. yeah. Let me feel that love. Yeah. You know, he's, I mean, he's yelling at the I mean, he is such a ham. Yes. It is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. This guy, if he doesn't uh, take over as head of marketing for the Sharks, <laughs> you guys are doing something wrong, right? <laughs> Um, I mean, just what what a personality. And obviously you see it on the ice and you see it during some of the practices and that kind of stuff and him having a great time. You remember the the, the tweet that I had sent out that time where uh, after he had scored and all the boys were, were on the ice going like this because yeah. when he scored yeah, those, yeah. the hat trick and he's like, yeah, on the bench. Yeah. And they were just clowning him at the next practice. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it, that's, you know, he was doing that and having a good time with it. That's the type of guy he is. If that's Patty Marlowe, Marlowe's probably going to go, oh, they're funny, and, and just move on, right? Too serious. But yeah, he's very, you know, he's getting yeah. cut and dry. Uh, at least that's that's what I gather from him, at least, you know. But Jumbo, my God, he's just a big kid. He's a very large child mm-hmm. with a big beard. Yes. You know, and and I, I just, I love I love him for it. I love the, uh, the energy that he brought uh, when he was a player. I love the energy he brings off the, uh, the ice now. Uh, or I should say on the ice because he's always out there with, you know, the, the Barracuda players and helping them develop and with uh, the, some of the Sharks rookies helping them develop. Um, obviously taking in Macklin as his billet, right, and having him live with them there. Um, not that it's so far away from Livermore, but, yeah, that, the drive, I can attest, sucks. Yes. So, yeah, having to drive up and down to San Jose from Livermore every time would, would absolutely be horrible. So awesome that he gets to live with them too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hearing stories like that where, you know, Cranky was talking about um, with, the, with the, the lady that you just brought up now, um, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't yeah. surprise me. Uh, just what, what an amazing human being. Um, and, and to be able to have him here in San Jose for as long as we did, just a special treat for anybody who, who came and watched uh, Sharks Hockey and anybody who interacted with him. I know uh, Debbie had some interactions with him before as well. And, um, you know, again, uh, what's his name? Uh, we, we were at his house. It's your, you were your old neighbor. Um, oh. the, the, the police. Uh, uh, uh. Bill. 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 Yes. When we were at, uh, he, he has that picture up. Yes. And it's, this is, again, it's just totally jumbo, right? Hey, can I get a picture, Joe? Only if it's a selfie, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so that's it, him and Bill. And they're both like this, like, the, yeah. just super happy. You know what I mean? And that's just what Joe 
that's just what Joe was like all the time as a player. You know, just the happiest guy. And to hear him uh, in his speech, giving everybody, having nicknames for everybody, and having a chuckle uh, at everything was going on, saying, "Hey, Cooch, uh, you know, we we hope to have you back. Uh, can't we just see you on the ice again?" Mm-hmm. And Cooch kind of didn't really. He was just kind of like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> so I think we can read into that one a little bit. Um, but the amount, like, <laughs> say when, when he said. Uh, to his, his cousin Scott, I hope you're proud to see our name up in the rafters. And how many times did you hear him get choked up? And after every single thing that he was saying, and how many times did he started to go like this? And then, whoo! Yeah. He had to do that. Whoo! He sounded like Ric Flair. He was going whoo so much, yeah. trying to get his breath to not cry and keep the tears out and everything. Um, Joe Pavelski was crying as well. You can see. I mean, it was just a really heartfelt uh, speech and moment for a guy that is that goofy. Not that many people should be crying. But that's what he meant to San Jose, and that's what he meant to all those people wearing teal. Um, just just a really awesome moment, uh, and I'm glad that I was able to watch it in some way, shape, or yeah. form. Pretty cool that you were able to be there for that, though. It was great. Yeah, I, I bought tickets, I think it was the night before, and uh, I took my son, my eight-year-old son. Yeah. And, uh, we I literally bought the last row up in the corner <laughs> on the upper level, mainly because I could, could have gone lower, but I was like, yeah. for him, he's eight, and we could stand up. Without blocking people and getting yelled at. True. So I'm like, screw it. We're going to go all the way to the top. And yeah. so we were literally the seats were the aisle, like the the stairs going up, go to the seats. Like the seats come across where the stairs come up. So I'm standing. I was, it's was actually great viewpoints because yeah. you have nobody in front of you yeah. at all. So we could see everything on the ice and we're on the corner. Kind of, we're in 204. Um, I would buy them again. They were great. Um but the stairs were, oh, man. Oh, there's a lot of stairs. It's very vertical, too. Yes. It's, it's not yes. like it's stairs. It's right. stairs. Yeah. For those who have not been to SAP, <laughs> the second deck is one of the steep, not the steepest anymore, steep. cause, but there's been more arenas. Yeah. But at the time, it was the steepest arena. So when you're sitting in the back row, you're not, like, far back away. You're almost, like, on top of the ice looking down on it. And uh, it, you, if you have vertigo, man, you can get pretty dizzy up there. Um <laughs> But it was great seats and it was and we had a great time and yeah. he had a great time. It did make for a long day because the ceremony started at two thirty for a five o'clock game. Oh my god! So we were there for a long time and we, we got to our seats probably like two twenty five. Like we were close to yeah. Like we made it. We were there in time. But it was like man, we're gonna be here for a long time and we were there until almost eight o'clock yeah. that night. So yeah. he was done. He yeah. was exhausted. Yeah. But it was fun. Um, I guess I would do it again, but I don't know how many more jerseys are going to be retired, right? Which is also part of the allure. Yeah. I also wanted to bring him because I was like, you know what? Every time you, him, goes to the arena, he's going to see that banner up and he's going to be there. Remember being there that yeah, day. Yeah. He he might not have many memories of that day uh, later on in life, but he'll remember being there and watch the banner. You know, if somebody spilled a beer, you, you, you had him in the back row. Nobody could spill a beer on uh, right. from behind him and, yes. and everything. So that's a core memory he'll be missing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sharky came by. Oh, did he? Yeah. So Sharky, like, because we're in the back, there's like kind of a platform behind the seats, okay. and then there's the luxury box. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he walks on that platform. So he was like walking like right behind us, and he came right because there was a seat empty next to me. Yeah. So he came all the way from the section over, and then came down, and so he was right there. And nice. of course, Calvin was like, "Oh yeah, <gasps> Sharky!" Yeah. Like, all the kids around us were just going nuts. <laughs> um, That's my reaction too, to be fair. Right. Just, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> I brought the beer spilling thing up. I don't know if, if anyone's going to get mad at me for talking about spilling beer on a kid. Is because that was one of Aaron's uh, memories. First, with, not yeah. spilled beer. It was at the Cal... My first yeah, game Cal I went Palace. to as a kid, I was yes. roughly the same age. It was probably about 10 yeah. with my dad. And uh, the only thing I really remember is it smelled bad. Okay. And the people behind us had empty milk cartons that they filled with their own beer ah, into okay, the game. Okay, so they're okay. drinking beer out of a mil- like a one gallon <laughs> clear milk jug, but it had beer in it. And it just stunk. That's all I remember. And then they were yelling. They were um, chirping yeah, the sharks. The sharks. Right. Were wondering. Yeah. And I was like, "Why? They're our team. Why would you get? Why would you talk smack about them?" Um, but yeah, hopefully his his memories will be a little bit. Better. Yeah, yeah, a little better. Yeah. I think a jersey retirement ceremony is probably up there. I think so. A little bit higher than uh, beer out of milk cartons. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I, I so, won't see the beer and milk cartons well, at every game I go to from now on either. <laughs> Well done. Okay, uh, so we actually do have a clip, but we're going to do the roll call first. Yes. So okay. go ahead. You want to okay, read? Uh, roll call. So tell us what city you're watching us from and what was your favorite part of Joe's Jersey retirement. And while you were typing that in, we do have a clip 
of the banner raising. The actual jersey net going in the rafters. This is from my seats. There you go. So the, the part that was missed there was actually them all having their hands on the button and he's they, they count them down three, Together, two, yeah. one, and then they hit the button and it explodes out of the box or whatever. Yeah, and then slowly yeah, rises they came, up. Yeah, right, 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 right. yeah. So okay. Um yeah, again, uh tell us what your favorite part of Joe's uh Jersey retirement was. Aaron, what was your favorite part out of all of that? I think just how many people showed up? Like, not just in, I mean, like the players, like the former, yeah, seeing yeah. all those former players was so cool. Like, um, obviously, they're there. They came in for the week because they were there for the alumni game or the Legends game that they played the night before, uh, which is also, I think, was cool. Um, I really wanted to go to that, but we just couldn't make it happen. I chose to go to the banner raising over the Legends game, yeah, kind of in yeah, a way. Yeah. Plus, that game started a little bit later. I think it was a 6 p.m. start, and there's no way that. My kids were going to make that. So um, I I think my favorite part of the whole ceremony is just having all those guys there. Uh, they also had a lot of guys that couldn't be there that had video tributes. I don't know how much of that was played online, but there was many. I mean, Brent yeah. Burns, because he's playing. Exactly. So he wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. Pete DeBoer is another one. Mm -hmm. um, Doug Wilson had a message. Um, just just so many different ones that that came through that was also cool so he had mentioned his favorite player was pat lafontaine yeah. on buffalo which yeah. is the reason i didn't realize i'm like why did he choose the buffalo game you would think they would take the the boston game or whatever right, right. Yeah. yeah i was thinking the bruins game yeah. for sure yeah. um his favorite i think it was his favorite team growing up because he was kind of close to that area yeah. um and pat lafontaine was his favorite player right so pat lafontaine gave him a message i don't know if that was played but no during it was like during the intermissions they played it nice. and it was and he was he was great. Like it was like a cameo, right, out of his house. Yeah, and he's like congratulating him, and he he made some funny joke at the end, so it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, that tied in some other stuff, so that was cool. Seeing just seeing all the love from everyone, you could see yeah. how much not just his teammates, yeah, but everybody just loves Jumbo. He's yeah. just a good dude. So was, that was my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think for me, I it's hard to put a finger on what the favorite part of that whole thing was because. Um, the, the whole ceremony, I, it just really embodied everything that was Joe. And you yeah. got to see that in, in so many different facets of that whole speech that he gave, um, to, to, like you said, the number of, of players, former players that were sitting there and wanted to come for, for this, this moment for mm -hmm. him. Right. Um, he had his mom and dad there, which is nothing new for somebody who's getting a Jersey retired, I'm sure. But like, um, the the amount of love and support that was there on the ice and then all of the players the current players were also off on their own little thing like sitting there uh doing the, the the house was packed and we haven't seen a full house in like a long time too right mm -hmm. um i don't know i i guess for for me actually that i guess the my, my favorite part would have to be the the ending of it all the culmination finally having that number 19 up there in the rafters where it belongs. Mm -hmm. um, it's belonged there for a long time. It's belonged there, frankly, uh, before, some, before he was playing with uh, with the Panthers and with the Maple Leafs, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Like, he could have ended his career a lot earlier, and it still would have gone up, right? He didn't need to have those extra years. But um, having it up there and having it right there alongside uh, Patrick Marlowe, it's, it's funny because they, they go 1-2 in that draft. Uh, and and Marlowe beats him to the to the rafters, right? So Marlowe got picked second, but he he, he got there first, first in the rafters. Two one, yeah, one, two. yeah. And it's funny because it, uh, Marlowe will always be known as Mister Shark, no matter how beloved uh, Joe Thornton is. But I think regardless of all of that, um, they're such good friends, and to have them side by side immortalized 
in in banner form, if you will, mm. uh, in SAP Center. Um, that to me is is got to be my my favorite part. And, and, and again, everything that came before that, the all the speeches, and especially Jumbo just being Joe. You know, um, he always talked about he was talking about how he's always got his shirt off in interviews and everything else. And <laughs> people, you get, I think somebody from the crowd was like, "Take your shirt off," <laughs> probably. You know, but um, I, yeah, it was just it was just a really awesome. Uh, touching ceremony and being able to see his number up there with uh, right alongside Marlo as it should be uh, really fantastic. So yeah, I, I would say uh, being able to, to look up there for every game and see mm-hmm. those, those up there. It's got to be my favorite part so far. Yeah. You know, you mentioned the packed house yeah. and I noticed, you know, a lot of sharks games, people kind of get there late yeah, and they're getting to their seats. So it doesn't seem as full. This game was very different jumping into the game now uh, because everybody was in their seats to start the game. It was crazy. So it was like, it seemed, again, like a playoff game. The atmosphere wasn't quite the same as a playoff game, but just the crowd being in their seats ready to go right when the puck is dropped. I thought that was cool. I haven't seen that in a very long time, probably since playoffs, right? right? Because in playoffs, you don't want to be late. You want to be there early. You want to see the show. You want to see all the stuff beforehand, which this was a very long and big show. But... (laughs) Um, I thought that was cool, and the atmosphere was cool. Um, my son was, I forgot to bring headphones for him, so oh. he was a hard time in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, then, he, yeah. then he kind of let up. He was fine at, by the end, but um, it was it was pretty loud. It was pretty loud. I mean, the ceremony itself was kind of loud with everyone cheering, uh, but the game itself, and getting into the game, um, that first 10 minutes of the game was not the Sharks of this season. They were so good and out shooting Buffalo and dominating. Yes. I was like, they're all over the place. They were probably on adrenaline going. I was wondering, did Thornton or some of the former players go into the locker room and give a pregame speech or something, right? Like before this game, because they were playing so well. Those first, that was the best 10 minutes of hockey I'd seen the Sharks start a game with at least. Because they've been having really slow starts and always falling behind. And they finally got a goal and got rewarded with getting the lead. Yeah. Um, but, and, and at the end of the first day, I shot 16, 11. I remember looking at the shots at one point because they did start off with an early power play. The shot, I want to say it was like 11 to one or 11 to it two was or high. something. Yeah. It was really high. I was like, wow. Yeah. Like we really, are, I feel like we're destroying them in mm-hmm. this game. And then I was like, well, in the back of my head, I'm like, eh, just wait, this game's not over yet. <laughs> so, uh, I, and I, I want to make that comment for the majority of the games this week, actually, is that uh, that's something I've been very critical of the Sharks and, and something that they need to improve on is not having these slow starts, not getting outshot 10 to 2 in the first period every single time, which they had been doing in previous weeks. Uh, I feel like this week, uh, at least two to three of these four games, they came out of the gate strong. And even if they weren't ahead in shots, they were right there in shots. Um, and this game, no exception. They came out uh, just guns blazing. And I have to imagine that that whole ceremony and them getting pumped uh, for that whole thing, getting inspired by all of that, had to have something to do with that. But um, just, again, a great effort this week in terms of starting on time, mm-hmm. starting off the game right. And you can see that in the shot totals. And this, this game, uh, no, no different here. Now, they did... Close the gap as the game went on, but at least they started off the right way, uh, which is not something the Sharks uh, typically have been doing, not even just this season, but even seasons past, right? Yeah. Uh, during this whole rebuilding process, it's been really rough going, especially in that first period, trying to get the guys going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was always slow starts. It was really annoying. So it was fun. It was fun. Oh, Zetterlin who scored. I couldn't remember who it was. Um, but. Zetterlin scores 10 and 959 into the period, right? And then yeah. uh two minutes later, not even two minutes later, no, a minute, minute, yeah. A minute and five later, a minute four later, uh, they tie the game. And I was like, oh, here we go again. Here we go. Come on, boys. Yeah. Um and that was was that shorthanded? No, it wasn't shorthanded. No, tuck no. up the shorty. Yeah, that's what it was yeah. in the third period. So yeah. Uh but Luke Cunning scores in this game, and actually he scored uh, in a game earlier this week as well. I can't remember <coughs> when it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we talk about Luke Cunning as the garbage collector. I don't think we have the garbage collector. Nope, we don't. Uh, we will work on that, <laughs> I promise. Uh, but, yeah, he, he got a couple goals this week. Um, good on him. Again, this is a guy the Sharks really do like. 
personally, I don't see it that much, but they really love Luke Cunning, and when he scores goals, uh, boy, are they happy for him. And I'm happy for him, too, because ultimately he's still wearing teal. But, yeah, to get two, I think, in, in this week, I think he's got four in the season. Four. That was a so, four, I mean, yeah. even just, just in this week, he doubles his goal total. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's it, it promising. You know, keep keep that role going. See where you can get from here. I mean, he's you know? a fourth-line guy. If he can get to double-digit goals. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the season, that's a win. It's a good season I think. for him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's, I think he's on the last year of his contract, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, pull it up real quick. I think it'd be, quick enough. it'd be great for him to have a good season and get moved to a team that can use him. He is, but the Sharks can't retain any salary. He's at 2.75. That might be a little too rich for some guy's blood, but maybe a decent contract coming back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can see him getting moved. Um, Teams need Jeeps, and this is another <laughs> a team full of Jeeps, the Sharks are. Uh, so there's Granlin at the end of his contract. Cunning with him. Sturm is another one who's been hurt now. And Giovanni Smith is another one. By the way, Nico Sturm, I did see him on the ice uh, two did no, yesterday. I think it was yesterday, yeah. Um, I saw him on the ice yesterday, and um, he was working hard. He mm-hmm. was skating hard. Uh, hard turns, sharp turns, hard shot. Minky has shot. I swear that guy shoots so hard. But yeah, um, he he's out there and he's working hard on the ice. He's, he's not doing like soft stuff. He hasn't joined the practice so much, but he was with one of the the coaches. Was it upper or lower body? Do you know? I don't even remember. I don't remember I, really honestly, either. I couldn't even tell you based on what I, I saw the other day. He looked he looked one hundred percent. Yeah. Me, but what do I know? Um, but it would be great to have him back in the lineup. The Sharks certainly uh, miss his. Mm-hmm. Uh, face off uh, percentage, uh, his ability to win those draws, and the, certainly the tenacity and uh, defensive prowess that he brings to any line that he, he ends up centering on. So uh, I'm sure he'll be back sooner than later. I don't think he, he didn't look far off at all. He looked like he was ready to go. So anyway, I uh, just want to say that's because you brought up uh, Nico. Nico. There. Yeah. Yep. yep. So uh, uh, this game, I felt like Tyler Toffoli had three plus chances. Yeah. That he, that. He scores these goals all the time. And for some reason, this game, he was just off. Something was off. Like, he would miss the net. He hit, I think he hit the post or crossbar in one of them. Um, great chances, great opportunities. He's in high score, high danger scoring chances and couldn't put it away. So I feel like this is a game that got away from them. Uh, Reimer was in net, too. Yeah. Former Sharks yeah. uh, goalie who promptly got booed uh, when they announced him for the game in the beginning. Yeah. Um, Got a good amount of booze, and then he was the first star of the game. Got a lot of booze yeah, at the end of the game yeah, for that yeah, one. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he was getting an earful there. But he did have one save in particular. Yeah. That is, as they said on the broadcast, save of the year candidate. This was bonkers. Like, he, it was the Macklin, I think, took the shot, and he came over, and he makes the initial save, and the puck flips up. And as the puck is going up and he's falling down, he turns his glove from here. He turns it over and catches it like this and lands like on his back. I missed missed that in the game because I ran to go get a water for me and Calvin. And Calvin stayed in his seat and I came back and I heard the crowd going crazy. And I'm like, did did I miss a goal? What happened? And I come back there and he tried to explain to me, oh, the goal, he did this. And he somehow caught it i had no idea what he was talking about i didn't get to even see the yeah. replay so you i gotta had no see idea. this replay yeah. it, 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 guys if you saw the replay it, uh, tell him tell him in the chat guys it was absolutely bonkers yeah for him he came across like this and made the save and then as he sees the puck going behind him and he flips his glove over like this so it would have been a celebrating goal it, it might have been who knows it might have like well, I mean, fallen hit in. the back of the of his leg pad and rolled in or something but celebrating shirt. you shot it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. okay i mean you should have seen celebrating's reaction too yeah guys you see this he goes like this. <laughs> he was, yeah. It was like, uh, what's his name? Not not Zegris, the other one. Uh, um, Trevor? No, I don't remember his name. The guy that flipped the, the, the puck over the net and then uh, the other one batted it in. Whoever that guy is, oh, I can't remember his yeah, name. Yeah, you're talking about uh, Zegris flipped it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Mason, was it? Uh, no, anyway, whatever. the look yeah. on that guy's face. It was just like, oh, it was the same thing Macklin did. It was just, he couldn't believe like what he just saw. It was crazy. So, okay. yeah. Definitely one of those ones of the spectacular variety. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people are booing Reimer in the chat. That's hilarious. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, it, it was it was a fantastic save uh, by James Reimer, Farmer Shark. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, okay, cool. Did, was there any um, uh, what do you call it comments here about the what their favorite moment was? Uh, yeah, there's a few in here. Let's, let's go through these real quick. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. <sighs> I had a cool talk with Scotty Nickel. It turns out he's the assistant general manager of the Predators mm. now, which is cool. I mean, think about the good old boys network. That's another, I think Greer played on the team with them, right? It seems like it would have been in the same era. Roughly, yeah. 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 Um, Kellen Foster's in Orange County. I love seeing all the players during the Buffalo game, especially Thornton's dad. Um, Debbie said, Sunnyvale and Joe's love of the game and his gratitude towards his family and friends. Um, Grand Iser did say, I'm in the minority, but I think if they ever did an Owen Nolan event, I'd get more choked up. Both players are special, but Owen is more special to me. It helps set the Sharks on their winning ways. It did change. That was kind of a new era for the Sharks when Owen Nolan came to the team because they did have those two teams that went to the playoffs. And with Jamie Baker, they beat the Red Wings 8-1 yeah. to one seed. And then they did it again the next year against, uh, oh boy, I'm Blake on the 95 name or the... 94 95 team who they beat but anyway they did it two years in a row but then they kind of went off and were a bad team for a while and then owen the trade with ozil Lynch to the then nordiques nordiques or they just yeah and then they moved to the yeah. become the avalanche um for owen nolan that was um that really changed i think especially because he was he was on the cover of nhl 98 yeah. right so he became kind of the first Mm, superstar, if you will, yeah, of yeah, the Sharks. Yeah. At least league wide, everyone knew who he was. So that was kind of cool. So yeah, I, I mean, I was a big Owen Nolan fan too, and he was there. He was yeah. at the event. Um, he doesn't do a lot of events. You don't see him a lot in alumni stuff. So that was cool to see him, even though they never even played together. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure he was still around. He played against him a bunch because he was on Calgary, Calgary at that yeah. point. Um, but yeah, that um, I love loved Owen Nolan. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I don't know. I wouldn't say retire as Jim's. I wouldn't, yeah. I, so, yeah, now, one, here's the thing now. There's, there's got to be some sort of criteria in terms yes. of Jersey retirement. We right? talked about this with Deverell last week. Okay, my, my question for you then is, does, does Pavelski's number go up? I don't think so. So, why not Pavelski when he, is, he was a, a drafted, homegrown talent, right? I know. I, I know, but and he's and he is as synonymous with the Sharks as anybody so the, else. Is. The criteria I said was a minimum a thousand games played with your team. Okay, I think for a jersey retirement, or X amount of cups won, or just that player that that's won a bunch of trophies, like maybe individual trophies while they're there. <laughs> I I love Pavelski. Yes, I'm not saying I don't like him. I don't think his number eight should be retired in the rafters. If they won a cup in 2016, yes. If they won a cup in 2016 and in 2018, 19, whenever they went to the conference finals, absolutely. But I don't think I don't think so for me. See, and I'm asking because I'm struggling with that myself. Like I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like I, I I would think that if Thornton and Marlowe are up there, that Pavelski is logical that he should be up there. Right, yeah. but like, why? But why am I hesitating and saying that he shouldn't be up there because he, he didn't should? I mean, he, nobody else won cups. Yeah, right? did Marlo win a whole bunch of, uh, of trophies that I'm unaware of? I don't think Marlo has no. a, a deep. But trophy he played. Case. He has the most games played ever in the yeah, NHL. Absolutely, one Absol- of them. fine, great. Um, Does P- Pavelski doesn't have as many games played as as Thornton and Teal? Sorry, what? Does Pavelski doesn't have as many games played in Teal as Thornton had? I'll tell you right now. Because Thornton played the first handful of years in Boston. Right? So, Pavelski started at 963. I knew he was just shy of 1,000 because he celebrated his 1,000th game for Dallas. I'm not saying that's one of the... For 37 games, I think we can make an exception. Right. But I'm still, like, I'm, like, torn. He's "Ah, third. I don't know that he should. It's Marlo, Thornton, Pavelski, and points. You yeah. can see the stats right there. Oh, okay. Um, this is the Sharks overall stat. So it goes Marlowe, Thornton, Pavelski, Couture, Burns. That's crazy that Couture is already up there too. But to me, it's like, okay, that's a whole era 
that you're you're retiring jerseys of three guys if you're Klu Pavelski. Yeah. Three guys from the same era. That all played together. That all played yeah. together, right? Okay. Well, there's going to be future players, hint hint Celebrini. Oh yeah. That could possibly be retired, right? How many guys are you going to retire? How many numbers are you going to retire? Yeah. You're, that, to me, that's too much. Yeah. I mean, that, who was it? Rusinowski said it? Somebody said that your jersey retirement is the ultimate thing over the over Hockey Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. nobody can wear your jersey again yeah. for that team. Yeah. I mean, Gretzky's the only one that's retired throughout the league. The league yeah. But, which, by the way, I will say this uh, retired throughout the NHL, and it doesn't mean that guys in other leagues can't wear 99. But they shouldn't, okay? They shouldn't. And too many kids are wearing 99 on their jersey, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing this. Parents do better. You see, Coaches see this a lot. do better. Do better. It's ridiculous the amount of number 99s I see. It's stupid. Have some respect for the game, for the man, for the legend, for yourself. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. It's, I mean, just absolutely it freaking is embarrassing. Absolutely freaking embarrassing. You think you're the great one? You yeah. kidding me? Get that jersey off your back, kid. So, Earn that. So angry. I hate it. I hate seeing it. And I wasn't even. Look, I didn't even cheer for any of the teams that Gretzky played for. Okay, but I have some level of respect. And seeing all these kids out there with 99 on their backs. Speaking of Gretzky. Ugh. Are you paying attention to Ovechkin? I am. He is going to beat. Is he back? No, he's hurt right now. Okay. But there's a chance. He'd be at the season. That he beat, not just the season, that he beats the record and does it in less Less games games than Gretzky, which to me is, that is crazier than actually beating the record. Like, because Gretzky's era was so different compared to what Ovechkin played through. I mean, it, it got better, but... I think just this that stat plus how many lockouts did Ovechkin go through where he missed out on playing yeah, some games, yeah. right? Like, um, I think that's crazy. So I'm watching this. This is awesome. Um, what? Joe just, just said, what if that kid had 99 but also Gretzky versus his own? Okay, if it's a fan jersey, Joe... Super cute Joe trying to troll me right now. Um, no, if it's a fan jersey and you're just like a fan of Gretzky's and you're wearing it, that's fine. But when you're on the ice playing and it's your last name and you have number 99, I, I want to rip that off your your son's back. I don't care if he's 11 years old. He, he, you take it off. It's Here's stupid. a couple of good comments. Fun oh. fact from I'm the Beat Plug. Fun fact, Mike Ricci and Sandus Ozelinch have their names on the cup right next to each other. That's cool. Oh, when they played yeah. for the Avalanche, um, and where was the other one? Uh, da, 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 da. Peter St. John. I looked up that set, Aaron. It turns out that Montreal has retired something like seventeen numbers, and the Rangers have like fifteen numbers. That's a lot of numbers. That's a lot being retired. Yeah, I mean they've been around a long time, so it makes sense. But to pick three from the same era when you're going to have hopefully have more eras right <laughs> of i like how you paused well hopefully that the team doesn't get moved or sold or changed hands yeah, like yeah, you know yeah, yeah. um because you never know i'm not saying that's going to happen but you yeah. never know yeah. with a, an owner who's in their 80s like who knows what's going to happen so um uh i just don't think pavelski belongs in that category but i'm having a hard time like justifying why you know what i'm saying if they did it i'd be like yeah okay right all right sure i can't make an argument against it so much right that's where i'm stuck i'm not saying that marlo doesn't deserve it i'm not saying thornton doesn't deserve it but i am saying in in the same way that if quentin musty should be playing in the nhl if will smith is then if if Martin, I'm sorry, if Martin, wow, Marlo and Thornton are are getting their jerseys retired, Pavs has to be in that conversation. I don't care if they play together. He has to be in that conversation. Now, whether you do or you don't, it's one thing or another, fine. But he's got to be in the conversation. I heard some people last week say in the Bokov. Yeah. I don't even know that I would agree with too. that. Yeah. You see? Yeah. I, I mean, think Pavelski makes more sense than Navi does, and I love Navi. Uh, it's a good sign that nobody has worn number eight since Pavelski left. 
That is so a there's point. a chance. That is I mean, a I, I was just looking that up real quick to see who else wore it. Yeah. Um, that I mean, might just be out of a respect thing. But if you're going to have nobody wear it out of respect, you may as well just have nobody wear it, period. Right? Yeah. I mean, Marco Sturm was number 19 before Joe. Yeah. And then he got traded for Joe. So yeah. that kind of made it easy. That's Maybe that's why he yeah, got traded. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even number 19. Yeah. We're gonna have to nah, get rid Joe would have had ninety seven because he wore that for uh, for Canada, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, no, I, don't draft think, I don't think he would have gone ninety seven for the NHL. Why not? He probably would have paid Sturm to take uh, the number. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Which is what yeah. players do when they come to a team like that, or when something like that happens. Um, yeah. Oh, Super Producer Jason. Yeah, it's falling asleep. Yeah, <laughs> it's giving us the sign. Okay, let's move this along then. Uh, what's what's next here? Um. Let's see. I saw this okay. on Blue Sky here. And he doesn't have the clip, but Pierre Lebrun. It's actually his bot that popped over. Uh, nothing official yet. And this was on the 21st, which is three days ago. Nothing official yet, but word is Brad Pascal and Joe Thornton will combine again to manage Canada's team in the Spangler Cup. And it sounds like Gerard Gallant will be wow. the head coach. Hmm? Wow. Yeah. So, and he says again. So it looks like he'd already done it before. I missed that part. Uh, now, the Spangler Cup, I'm like, what is the Spangler Cup? So I Googled it. Spang- what is the Spangler Cup? Because I'm old. And it's an annual invitational ice hockey tournament held in Davos, Switzerland. So it makes sense that he's involved. It's also the team that he played for right. uh, during the lockout and where he met his wife. Um, it was first held in 1923. And it's often cited as the oldest invitational ice hockey tournament in the world. Um, usually, uh, Team Canada is one of the only team or the only North American team that goes over and plays. There's been a handful of others that have gone, but they've been the consistent. And, uh, yeah, this is going to take place in, I think it takes place in December. Um, so he's going to be managed, or was it manager? Is that what it was? Uh, they're managing the team. Yeah. Not coaching, but managing, like, kind of general manager. So they're probably going to be picking the players that are going to be going. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. So that made me think, oh, is that kind of his kind of kickstart into a management role after life after hockey, right? Mm-hmm. Right now he's, he's what is he, the director of vibes? or the Yeah, director of vibes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that just made me think like, oh, he's getting his feet wet a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Right? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. And he's, I mean, you know, he's, he's got uh, a good mentor there in San Jose with uh, Silky. <laughs> so... You're just going to call him that. I don't know that I'm going to call him my Greer again. Would you call that to his face? Silky? uh, Maybe if I ran (laughs) immediately after that. (laughs) Silky. (laughs) No. uh, Yeah, maybe maybe he is. Maybe he's getting interested in that stuff. I don't think so because uh, I know right now, and he even said this, uh, he's having a great time coaching uh, the uh, 11U uh, team um, that uh, his son plays on. So, yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's probably what he's more focused in on uh, right now, and maybe down the road after he gets his feet wet, right? Yeah, uh, maybe that'll be something he pursues. But he doesn't need money either, so I can't right. imagine he cares. Oh, he doesn't yeah. do it for the money. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more of just the love of it. Yeah, but I don't know if if you want your gym hey, boy, with the tarps off, you know, like I just. It's kind of a weird GM meeting, wouldn't you think? Yeah, it's true. So, I don't know. I don't director, know if he's GM Director material. of Vibes, that's what it was, right? I, I don't director. know if he's GM material. Like, I don't, I don't know if it, that's up his alley. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't thinking he's too GM. fun for I that. I was thinking just something, work yeah. officially working for a team in some kind of role, yeah. maybe assistant GM, maybe yeah. just uh, sideshow Bob clown <laughs> guy that's there for comedic Timing. Well, anyway, so he'll be he'll be uh, co-managing uh, Team Canada for the Spangler Cup. I, I saw uh, it's on ESPN uh, Plus or something like that for, yeah, yeah. for USA. For US. So if you happen to have that, that is where you can go to check that out. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Moving on, upcoming upcoming games, not upcoming. Words are hard. Words elude me. Words elude me. Uh, yeah. So Monday, that is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wow. Okay, it's, it's a busy month. Uh, it's, yeah. This week itself too. Four games. Yes. Monday, L.A. Kings uh, against L.A. Kings, so at home, home, which is nice. Uh, Wednesday against Ottawa yep. at home. Friday against Seattle. This is an earlier game, twelve thirty p.m. Again at home, and then uh, this is what they call home and home. So right. Friday in uh, in San Jose against Seattle. Saturday in Seattle against Seattle. It's nice, is <laughs> it's a twelve thirty afternoon game. 
Yes. Then they can fly. Right. It's not right, a right. night game, and then followed by a night game. So they got to right. get a little bit more rest than a true back to back. And I'm sure that helps both the the sharks and and it's Seattle. Yeah. It's not a far right, right, flight. Right. You're not going cross country. Yeah. But I love these types of home and homes. I wish the NHL would kind of schedule a little bit more of those. Maybe even within the division, like because you play your division more than you play other teams. Yeah. Um, because it gets. The feistiness carries over from one game to the next. Yeah. And uh, you see more of a playoff type game. And now, especially if these were later in the season, maybe February, March, yeah. when teams are really fighting for playoff spots and you really need to get uh, divisional wins to jump leapfrog some of those guys. Mm-hmm. I would like to see more of this. Uh, it also kind of cuts down on travel a little bit. Maybe not the home and home, but definitely gives you a playoff atmosphere and most likely a playoff preview of upcoming playoffs. Not, I'm not saying for the Sharks. I'm just saying in general, when you're playing against your division, because you usually play against your division, a good chance that you're playing against your division in the first round. So it would kind of carry over into that. So I like it. I'm expecting nastiness to come out, especially in the second game. They've already played each other, yeah. I think, once this season, right? Yeah. So they've... so. It's just fun. It's yeah. fun to see these games. And I feel like Seattle, they match well against Seattle. And it's a winnable game. I'm going to be honest. As long as Celebrate is in the lineup, they, they've got an, an opportunity to beat any team. Mm. Like, literally any team. Like, that's the magic that he brings. And we've seen them play extremely good teams. We saw them play the Jets earlier this season. The Jets are on an absolute tear. They didn't look horrible against the Jets. Um, we, and we've seen them play everybody else that it's gone to like a single goal or get an empty netter against. Or they take it to overtime. We got that stat earlier where there was five games leading the league in, um, you know, when, when they're within a goal within 10 minutes and then tie it up. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, this team just doesn't, they don't quit. And, and we said that in the last couple of seasons. Like, yeah, that's what you want. You want a team that's just going to make it entertaining and not give up and everything else. But this team just does not stop, right? Um, and a lot of that, I think, has to do with that culture in the locker room, right? Um, not so much necessarily changing. I don't think anybody goes into a locker room going, well, we should give up tonight, right? <laughs> that's not – that's right? But I think there's that, that youthful energy, um, especially coming out of Macklin, that is just – it's infectious. infectious. Yeah, You're right? absolutely. And, and I think everybody's kind of feeding off of that and kind of like, you know what? We have come back before in these other games. We've done it five times, right? We, we've we've done this. We've seen that we've got the skill enough to do that, uh, to, to make this game that seems like it might be out of reach or it might be too late and still be able to maybe squeak one out here. And there's that belief. And that's one of the things about this season that maybe is a little bit different or feels a little bit different. And I'm, I'm trying to put my finger on what that is. And I think that might be it. I feel like this team believes that they can compete with everybody else. They don't just say it on camera. That's the big right? difference, I think, from last season is they don't give up. They do believe that they have a chance yeah. no matter what. And it helps that they have half of a different roster than they did last year. Yeah. <laughs> so And a new coaching staff, too. Yeah. Kind of a new coaching staff, I guess. Because Warsawski was there as an assistant. But uh, a different mindset, different different players yeah. different everything um and yes I, I plus you have this wonder kid of celebrini and even will smith to some oh, degree you, right you brought his name yeah, yeah, i whatever. told you not to do that um i was also mistaken they have not played seattle this season yet uh thank you sharknado for for pointing that out um i don't know why i was thinking um i kind of mix up utah and seattle oh, i'm thinking of utah too yeah exactly <laughs> like i just mixed them up <laughs> I was like, wait, no, we play the two <laughs> bland no, yeah, name yeah. teams. Yeah. Um, also, I've been looking into going to the Seattle game so much oh. and like pricing it out and everything that I just assumed that they'd played it. <laughs> and it's just in my head so much. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so that'll be exciting to see them play yeah. for the first time this season against okay. each other. Um, I have to pull my, my phone out here because there's... Uh, where is it now? Um, don't go to me, Super Juice Jason. Go back there. <laughs> Yes, this so, is great. There you go. Yeah, things are awesome over there in in Aaron Land. Three right now, the, hours later. Three you know hours looking later. For right now. Uh, I was looking for the player stats for the Sharks, and I can have you bring that up if you'd like to. But 
Um, now, that. again, plus minus is not exactly the greatest stat, but it is fairly telling. And um, on this team, oh, we talked a little bit earlier about this. Mm. Leading the team with a plus four. Oh, you've got it there. Okay, well, leading the team with a plus four. Two players. The red, the attack of the killer tomato himself, <laughs> Fabian Zetterlin, the red faced baby assassin. Yes. That's what he's, he's got the yes. reddest face of anybody on the ice or on the planet. I think it's the ice that brings it's out like the a blood little in his cherub cheeks. doll. He really, he's just <laughs> like, you know, it's like little angel cherub dolls. By the way, things that you, and when, he, when he scored and you saw him go like this. For Jumbo, for Jumbo during the yeah. Buffalo game. Fantastic. Him and, I, I wouldn't have guessed this one, Jake Wallman. Yeah. I know he's got the offense, but I've seen him do some really weird things defensively, <laughs> and I would not have expected him to be at the top of this list. Now, again, plus minus is kind of a whatever stat. But both of those guys plus four. Who is at the bottom of the list in plus minus on this team? Oh, boy. Who's at the bottom? Give me the name. There's only one. There's no tie. It's all it's by close. himself. He's Will Smith. All by himself. Will Smith. Will Smith is at the very bottom of a minus thirteen. He had a rough. He did first couple of weeks. He absolutely. I did. think he the first month. He did. He and then of, he had a really good game where he scored two goals. He had a couple good games close to each other. Like no. they were. Yeah, he strung yeah. together some good plays. I thought he's coming together. He's bringing it together. It's gonna be a slow process. He had he had a good game where he got two goals. Okay. He's got four total points on the season, and two of those are goals that came from the same game. All right. I'm not saying Will Smith is bad. Okay. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if this was Daniel Gushin and, the, and these were his stats, he'd probably get pushed down to the AHL. You can't tell me that a guy like Colin Graff, who's doing fantastic at the AHL level, doesn't deserve a shot to come in and take over some of these minutes. You can't tell me there are other guys on the AHL roster right now that wouldn't be getting a shot if that guy's name wasn't Will Smith and they hadn't pumped him, okay? I'm sorry, but your development days thing, I'm just not buying it anymore. I'm not buying it. And it's not that he's not gonna get better, he's going to get better. And by the end of the season, he'll probably be a pretty decent player I feel like, as you said with one of the other guys, and I can't remember who it was, and I said, don't put him in the AHL. And you said, no, he belongs in the AHL. He's going to get better if you Musty? Put, I think it was, uh, no, no, no. It wasn't Musty. I think it was, was it Eklund? I don't remember. It was one of the players. You were like, last no, year? I don't remember or, okay. uh, who it was now. But you had said about somebody, you, you put him in the AHL because he's going to do better there. And I cannot remember who it was. And he's going to grow more. And that's my justification for Will Smith right now is... I'm not saying he's a bad player. What I am saying is these development days, if he needs them, then he shouldn't be in the NHL. He should be getting more reps in the AHL, getting confidence, playing better. When I watch Will Smith play, it's not just about the stats. I brought up stats. Yes. Stats aside, when you watch him play, there is a lack of foot movement. He's coasting all over the ice. When he is skating and he's trying to get a puck like from somebody else, he's trying to get the puck away, there's a lot of lunging. and uh, There's a lot of that going on. When he shoots the puck, his feet are still. He's waiting for someone to get him the puck, and then he's firing the puck standing still. There's a lot of things to his game that have me scratching my head as to why is he still in the NHL, and I don't think that he needs to go to the AHL because he's bad or because he's terrible or whatever else. I think he belongs there because that's where you go to develop. And I do not think, and it's perfectly fair. He's 19 years old, okay? I think he, as a 19-year-old, he's not ready to play in the NHL, whereas Macklin as an 18-year-old is. And it's just a difference in their approach of the game, right? I would much rather see some of these guys in the AHL who are doing extremely well get that opportunity because of the hard work. As opposed to his name is Will Smith and he was the guy that we've paired with Macklin. And so therefore we must have them both in the NHL, even if one of them needs more development days. <laughs> right? And I watched even in the game, I think it was ah, I think it was today's game or, or uh, the other day's game, where Puck was coming out of their zone, out of uh we'll say it was Buffalo. I don't know if it was Buffalo, but it's coming out of the Buffalo zone. 
going through the neutral zone. And Smith is behind, and he's kind of chasing it down, and he's not really chasing it down. You could see that he could be moving his feet faster. And Macklin's, like, to the left of Will Smith, kind of coasting through and seeing, okay, are you going to get there? And it's like he recognizes that Will, that's, that's as much as Will Smith's given. Macklin turns the Jets on, gets in front of both of them, and takes the puck away. <laughs> You, but that's what I'm saying. It's it, it doesn't have to be that it's Macklin. It could have been anybody else, anybody with some some speed in their step, right? But that's what an NHLer does, and Will Smith is not doing those things. So I, again, for me, it's not that he's a bad player and he's a bust. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if it's going to take him 200 games of NHL experience to get to where we think he ought to be, maybe some of that should include some AHL games to help him get to those 200 to where he can be what we think he's going to be. I'm excited for the future of Will Smith. I'm not excited for the present Will Smith in the NHL. I would much rather see him get his reps at the AHL level and give somebody else who's put the hard work in go and get that opportunity at the NHL level. Do you think he has to do because he's all in the marketing? <laughs> he's what? All in the marketing stuff, so they have to kind of keep him up. That's what I'm saying. I'd be, his name is Will Smith. You put him on these posters all over the place. Now looking at and so we got to play him. Looking at the Barracuda stats right now, Colin Graf is leading. Look at Colin Graf. He's got five goals and fourteen assists, so nineteen points in sixteen games. I don't even know who this name is. Podolarski, Andrew Podolarski. He's got seventeen points in sixteen games. Uh, Luca Cagnoni, sixteen and sixteen. Dude, five goals and assists. Every level. That he's played at, I'm impressed. I'm impressed because usually there's That's kind of small. a there's kind of a learning curve, right? When you jump from yeah, when you went from uh, was it WHL to AHL, yeah, that was kind of a a big jump for him, and mm-hmm. he's doing well. Yeah, it's not stopping. Yeah, it wasn't a blip. It's consistent. Right. I'm very very excited about that. Um, maybe we do see some of these guys get called up close to the trade deadline. Because there's going to be more spots opened up with more guys leaving. See, and it's not like you can't push Will Smith down because he'll get claimed. No, he's not going to. He can't get claimed. No, but I, people I, I, pay I, to see Will Smith. No, they don't. Partially. No, they don't. They, I'm not paying to watch Will Smith. Are you kidding? I'm paying for two things. I'm paying to watch Macklin Celebrini and Nico Sturm, captain of my heart. No, Those are the two guys I'm paying for, and Nico's hurt. Okay, so you do the math. I'm there to watch Macklin. That's what it is. The Podolarski Podolarski disrespect is insane. I'm probably butchering I'm his name. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I don't even know who that guy is, and I should. You're absolutely yeah. right. I should know who this is because you're probably going to see him get a call up one of these days. Colin Graf is also benefiting playing with AHL All Stars. That's true. What I want to see is and <laughs> I want to see Mook Mendelin get called up at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah and get some yeah, games yeah. in. Yeah. Um, I know he's been hurt, uh, my, 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 look, my whole point here is there's a whole slew of guys that are doing extremely well on the AHL roster. And it's not just the points. Again, I'm sure you can see the way that they're playing and, and the effort level that they're giving. And I just, I don't know if Will thinks he's still in college or not and that he's just better. And so therefore he doesn't have to, I don't know if that's what it is, but I'm telling you, I'm watching Will Smith. I'm not looking at just the stats. I'm watching Will Smith and I'm going, move! Like, why are you so slow? Oh my God. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is, uh, but the sooner the better that he can remedy that. And I think that he's going to do that quicker by getting games in the AHL. I don't know. But that's my take. Uh, I, I asked you not to bring up his name. You did. You didn't ask me to, to rant, so that's on me. Okay, but uh, you brought up the name. So there you go. I think we have to wake up, super producer Jason. Yeah, poor guys <laughs> asleep over here. Anyway, but not you guys. You guys are awake. Thanks for staying up with us for as long as you have. If you're still in the chat, we appreciate you there, Aaron. Uh, don't remember. Don't go forget ahead. Colin Graf. Yeah, he was the uh, undrafted. Yep. Uh, college player yep. that basically got to choose where he wanted to go because there was a bunch of teams that wanted wanted him mm-hmm. and the Sharks were one of them and he signed with the Sharks because yep. he saw a better path to the NHL mm-hmm. I think than any other one. and they probably because we were terrible right yeah right <laughs> I, I'm sure it's coming 
I'm sure it's coming. It has to be coming. It has to be. I don't know about Will Smith, but I'm sure Colin Graff is the next guy that's going to get called up. I don't think it's going to be Will Smith. And I think it's because his name is Will Smith. And they've got him on posters. And they've been promoting and blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you, it's if you go by what you see on the ice, there are other guys that belong in that spot over him. And if his name was not Will Smith, if it was Podolarski or however you say that guy's name, and nobody knew who this guy was, and he was performing at the level that Will Smith is performing in the NHL, that guy's getting pushed down to the AHL and another guy's getting called up. And it... it Say whatever you want to say about it. Call it whatever you want to call it. But that's the way I see it right now. I, I don't. I just feel like he would do much better getting a chance to play in the AHL to get some confidence, to get told to move your legs Bad faster. Habits this being, is not a development league. Yeah. It's not a development league. If you need development days, you're in the wrong league. That's the way I see it. So I wish Will Smith all the best. Uh, I hope he gets a whole heck of a lot better. But that's just what I see right now. It's a little frustrating. And I hope that the other guys that are working their tails off in the AHL are getting um, are going to get their chance. It's not a bad take, by the way. It's a great take. Um, I, I hope that they get their chance because they've been working their tails off and they deserve the opportunity. So there you go. Debbie uh, says, good night, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving and, and celebrate uh, to all that celebrate. Thankful for the Fin Factor and the community. For you. Oh, thank you, Debbie. We're uh, thankful for you and your cookies as well. <laughs> and uh, obviously being in the chat and, and talking with us and staying up as late as you have. Do appreciate that. I understand that they're not the same, but my point is if they were producing at that level, they'd probably be either healthy scratched or sent down. That's my point. So with that and I, I probably struck a nerve with a lot of these people today. yeah ooh yeah ooh anyway um i don't normally do that normally we're uh, we're all happy here but i had to go on my rant sorry it's fine sorry not sorry on that note we are gonna say good night because it is very late and we appreciate everybody once again oh whoa, red did we score did we score a goal what is this uh, we appreciate all you guys being in the chat and uh, everybody who's subscribed. If you're not subscribed, it's just the button down there. Tap that. It's fantastic. And then hit the bell so you know when we're going live. That way you are uh, alerted to the fact with big red lights in the background. So uh, we appreciate, again, all of you guys jumping in. If you'd like to support the show, again, you can do that with the super chat function or you can go to Venmo at the Fin Factor. Uh, put something in there and, and we'll go ahead and read it off from one of the shows that's coming up here. Uh, you can also go to thefinfactor.com, check out any of the merch that we have there for sale. It does help support the show, so we do appreciate that. On that note, we're going to end it. Aaron, any last thing to say here? No, Tyler, let's go. You're not going to defend Will Smith. Well, I'm just going to sit there and take it. I don't agree, <laughs> but I'm not going to get into it at the end of the show. We'll talk about that maybe next show. Yeah. But for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week, as long as I'm not getting <laughs> kicked off the show and suspended. Yeah, I probably will. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com, where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.